Welcome to the Cross-Border Darts Challenge featuring the Nation's Cup. Coming to you from the historic Uptown Arts District in Michigan City, Indiana. Let's get our first match going and send it down to our MC for this event, Jay Flats. Everybody check your hair and makeup. Here we go, here we go. All right, thank you, Gordon, and thank you, Sean. This room is ready to go. Are you ready? It's the cross-border darts challenge. It's time for our first matchup of the evening, but I can't bring them out if this rowdy room isn't ready. Up first tonight, three-time world darts champion from Oshawa, Ontario. Please welcome John Party Maple Parts. And John's opponent for the evening, reigning Continental Cup champion from Portsmouth, Virginia, known as the Neon Nightmare. Give it up for Stow Buns. Hello everyone, this first match of the 2024 CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge live at the beautiful Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana is going to be amazing. The first match features the defending Continental Cup champion Stowe Bunce taking on a player who needs no introduction, the three-time world champion, John Parry. I'm Sean Green, honored to be your play-by-play -play commentator for this event, and I'm excited to introduce my partner in comms for this event, the incredible Gordon Dixon. Gordon, Stowe has done some good stuff in the last six months, including defeating a former world champion in Peter Wright. Can he beat another former world champion tonight? Well, it's tough to say uh, that Stowe is anything but the favorite uh, in, this, in this opening match. Um, what he's done over the past uh, six, 18 months um, has been absolutely incredible. Um, the thing is, I haven't seen Stowe for a while. Uh, we recently had the Virginia Beach uh, Classic, uh, played well, saw some, some decent averages there, but a little much different format For to, sure. uh, to be judging uh, current form on. Um, and same thing with John. Haven't seen a whole lot uh, from him in terms of uh, um, results. So uh, we can start off with a little bit of uh, an, an open narrative here. But uh, All right, thank I you think it would be very tough if, tough if uh, Stowe is your favorite. First. Yeah, I, I would on. agree with that in entirely. It, and I think that um, he 
the odds would say that as well. And that's what oh, a cool thing to say man. for the first time here uh, as we make history with uh, being able to wager on darts in, uh, in our events. Uh, all you have to do is head on over to nxtbets.com hey, forward slash play CDC and get signed up now to take advantage of sportsbook sign up bonuses. Uh, sign up offers may not be available yet in all states and not available outside the United States. Good. 21 plus, please refer to affiliated operators, PNC, void where prohibited gambling problem. Call 1 800 Gambler. Yeah, this may be uh, my last time on uh, the floor. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just to throw that out there. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> well, it, it has to become legal where you are first, and <laughs> once it does, there you go. But look at Stowe. One hundred and twenty. And John Park starting out a little bit on fire as well. Yeah, John's certainly trying to set the tone. Doing this match early. Knows what Stowe's capable of. Let's see. He's done commentary on Stowe <laughs> in the past six months a few times. So, uh, but yeah, you, s you said it correctly. Hey, it he definitely knows what Stowe has been capable of recently. Defending Continental Cup champion heading into this. And I think Stowe would like to make sure everyone knew that what happened to the World Arts Championship was uh, hey, not how he typically would play in this moment. Yeah, certainly uh, – um Different than than what we saw at the Grand Slam, but um, hey, if you're stubborn, sometimes there's bad days at the office. That's just uh, part of this game. All right, one three one left for John Part. Starts it on the twenties, and now we'll try and set it up and hope that Stowe can't take out the one two six. And no, uh, nice great nice. dart, great so setup there. This is a great lead for Stowe because of the nineteen eights. Not anymore though. Ace of Swords, going to require three suits. All right, break a throw here in leg number one for three-time world champ. Yeah, this would be a good settler. He needs to find it. Oh, 24. It's not going to happen. Stowe, you so require 42. After a pedestrian leg here, Stowe to a top, or to Game's a 16. On the first there leg. it is. Stowe bunt. Hold Second it, leg throw. is John to throw first. Game on. And you can see the disappointment on John's face, and I, it's because it's a r first of five legs. You had a major opportunity to break the throw there of Stowe and get control of it. You just cannot give up those opportunities Sixteen. against the talent that is Stowe Bunts. Well, and John is such a, a master of the of the game, both on the obviously the throwing side for for a long time, four, um, four. but also I, he's he's one of the better thinkers yes. uh, about the, about darts. Um, so he'll know that that was a, a blow psychologically as well. Nine five. He's had the job in the commentary booth since 1995 for a reason. It's because he is quite the thinker. <laughs> it's eight. All right, John sitting down 346. Stowe back on 399. Definitely not the Stowe start that we were looking for. 136. See John disappointed even though he was two for three there on that uh, that turn. And could this be? Could this be? It is our first 180. Stow bunts. Going to be kicking on. To the first of many here in this event. 118. Absolutely fantastic venue here, Uptown Social. In Michigan City, Indiana. It look at this from. Oh, he's starting to feel it. John, you but it's a o it's honestly a beautiful place. It's a pleasure to be here. They are taking care of us. It's really cool to kind of have the dynamic with the movie filming as well. And I'm excited hey, for a good shot. But look at that, John Part, 92 John checkout Hart. for a 15 darter. Third leg is so to throw yeah, first. such a great correction there after the first dart trouble one. Holds his own throw. Talked about what a shot that was, uh, kind of to the arm in the first leg. Well, that's uh, a shot right back at Stowe. It's a good settler. Nine good cover shots six. again from John. Nine 
No, you mentioned you sure. haven't seen Stowe very much in the last uh, couple months or so. He was at Virginia Beach, I think, as a good warm up there. Um, he was out throwing last night for a little bit, having a good time. No, I didn't see and him. Just kind of relaxing and preparing for this moment. Give a shout out to David Garfinkel for the design of that jersey. No, I didn't see <laughs> as all of Stowe's jerseys are absolutely amazing. Yeah, fitting for the occasion for uh, for sure. One hundred and forty. And if John wore a different shirt, we'd all be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to fix what isn't broken. Well, and I'm sure uh, that was that was the first time that uh, John Part had been uh, introduced in that, that <laughs> yeah. fashion. Hey, uh, g let's give a huge shout time. out to <laughs> to Jay. Um, I like that it's a different style than anything we're used to. We were in here cracking up as he was uh, bringing out those walk-ons, but uh, he is a professional in that field of uh, kind of warming up the crowd, and you can see it there. It's an absolute pleasure to have him with us. Well, it doesn't find the treble, so set up shot from here. He'll try to let's stay see. there and John Uruguay bounces around and only finds a single. See where John starts. He has options, but he lo does love the 32. side try to go underneath be able to do it so setup continues for him yeah, yeah for sure well you require of course for sure for a hold of throw for stow buns see those averages continuing to climb the charts yeah, continue to steady so only need a Fourth single dart to close three. out there game on crowd and turn out here in Michigan City. It's awesome. It and they're excited. Hey, they're looking forward see. to this. Uh, we just continue to see ticket sales and, and continue to get more and more excited as this event uh, is close to here. And I mean, we sold out tomorrow yeah. night. I believe we're close to sell out tonight. I, you cannot ask for a better atmosphere for these players to get to have and that they honestly deserve. No, it's so cool to see AC. the the continual progression that uh, that the CDC makes in uh, in having these larger events. Ninety-one. And now, with the inclusion of gambling and betting on on these, it becomes a just another great step forward. Look at this. One hundred and forty. Oh. Oh. It looks so good. Look at that. The average Joes are in the crowd. Yeah, so many cool uh, dart staples uh, starting to come out here. You see the, the winner of uh, the event last year kicking off the event. Uh, that's something that you see at the professional level uh, a lot. Um, and then the uh, the fancy dress, as they call it, over uh, over the pond there. Another nice addition to the uh, the crowd here in the United States. So it's going to put a lot of pressure on this 98. John, John took out 92 in leg number two to hold his throw. He's going to probably have to take out 98 to hold his throw here. He'll do this. 57 for 36. There it is. Oh. 62. Almost so a great recovery. 70. You see if he returns. Stowe has 70 left. These are the kind of shots that we've seen Stowe punish with multiple times in the past. 30. Oh, and it sails just high. John, you require 36. John with a chance to level again. Right there. And unfortunately, with the way his darts lay, that's a little bit awkward. No score. And that's really all he could do was throw a good dart against so the other two darts and see 40. if it kicks yeah. down. See if he could get it underneath. My goodness. Look Wire widths. Aims on the fourth leg. And there's the break of throw Stowe for Stowe. Bye. Takes a three to one lead in this Stowe first of five. To throw first first match of the 2024 Cross Border Darts Challenge. Look at this. 100 and Punishes eight. straight back. Dude. What a start for Stowe. That's a 180.
I bet if you'd asked John what uh, what Stowe was going to open up with in that leg, he would have been able to to call that 180. No, I, no, I mean that's that's the the measure of the man at this point. It's the kind of game that uh, that Stowe's playing. 44. And then he throws a round like I would throw after the 180, which I appreciate that he is showing us. That one's on every me. man. Th that one's on me, so <laughs> I was winding you up there. John is having a beautiful first start hey and just unable boy. to follow. It's now two turns in a row. So punishes. Yeah, you start to see that grin. That uh, I'm up to no good grin uh, that Stowe gets on his face when he's uh, when he's flowing. Certainly not the. Uh, Heights of the averages that we would expect, but uh, seven these aren't bad at all. Yeah. Pretty pretty well. Well. When I get into They're averages last year on tour for both players, and this is throughout the entire season. 152, though. All right. So average 86.92 overall for the year, and John Park 75.99. So both of them raising their averages a little bit for this, which you'd love to see first match out. You never know how that's gonna shake up. From the start, so you John Hart was throwing 36. extremely well. Hard to think if he would have hit that 32. And on the fifth leg. But there you go. Stobun. A 13 darter from Stowe Buns. That average John is going to jump up a little bit into the 90s. Game on. Yeah, tough spot for John now. Needs to win the remaining leg. More on the spin here. Well, all he can do right now is win this one. Nine, Hold his throw nine. here and then worry about the rest later. As the Boston Red Sox said in 2004, don't let us win the first one. Hey, boy. Huge shout out to our official there, Mr. Nick DeRossier, all 19 years old of him. And my roommate this weekend. 123. And of course, Mr. Angelo DeGiulio. Julio. <laughs> 100. Beautiful uptown social for the cross border darts challenge. I wasn't watching John's eyes there, but that almost felt like a uh, a switch of targets in the middle of the throw. I could see that, just the way that that... Just the way yep. his body kind of moved there. John's a very mechanical uh, um, thrower. Great second dart, and you can stack it. Hey, Ideally. One. Yeah, just a little lazy on that third one. Um, but uh, in a good position here to, uh, to at, le at least reel one back. So not going to put any pressure on this. John, so John has six from 140 if he needs them. Yeah, and really the first time we haven't seen Stowe um, pressuring the throw of John. But he only gets 40 there. And if you didn't think you'd hear us before, I hope you're happy oh, now. <laughs> John, you require 100. Great first start for John. Tops. Oh, we thought it was in. Gonna step to the left. Six. Will he return or will this 1 4 so 4 go to win this match? 44. That groan was so genuine. <laughs> yes, it was. There's the first. Another one of those. Oh, just high. Eight, eight. And this is really where John is, has faltered. He's, he's gotten chances like this throughout the entire match and just not been able to find him. You see, he just looks like he's trying to over-exaggerate that throw and trying to aim it a little bit. Yep, trying to place him rather than throw him. He's not going to find it. So Stowe to clean it up. Game shot. And there you go. Match number one goes to Stowe Bunch, the defending Continental Cup champion. Five to one victory over John Part. John's going to be kicking himself a little bit there because he had opportunities. Yeah, John, uh, um, just right, just not as sharp as we've seen him in the past. To 
on part. It's one of those situations where early on you expect Stowe so to, to maybe win it five to one, uh, possibly. Uh, however, the way that happened was very surprising. John scored very well, stayed with, with Stowe on the scoring power, just the doubles cost him. Yeah, it's one of those if, if that, uh, that early 32 would have went in uh, or, or a dart at 36 uh, for a big yep. out, um, any one of those things could have changed the, uh, the face of that. But uh, the, the chalk uh, winner there, our, our uh, returning champion, Stowe Bunce, uh, makes it through to the next round. Well, don't go anywhere, guys, because coming up next, no name, Doug Bame, will be taking on Excalibur, Canada's number one, Mr. David Cameron. Yeah, excited to see that one. Uh, um, Doug loves a good upset. Yep. And he'll be, uh, he'll be geeked up for that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from the Cross Border Darts Challenge right after this. Let me tell you about A to Z Darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today. Is the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Green, your play play commentator, and we are back at Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana, for the 2024 CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Sean Green, your play play commentator for the CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge, live here in uh, in Michigan City, Indiana, Uptown Social, and I'm joined by Gordon. Good stuff, Dixon. Gordon, right now, uh, first match, Stowe Bunce wins 5-1 to one over John Part. He's making faces at me right now. He sure is, yes. <laughs> Which you wouldn't expect anything else out no, of. No, 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 no. That's, that's the way my man plays the game. Um, hey, I want to talk about the uh, the bracket a little bit Absolutely. as we wait for this uh, this next uh, uh, fixture to come up. Uh, we just started at the uh, the bottom half of the bracket with uh, Stowe Bunch coming through. The winner of that uh, is going to take on the winner of Jim Long and Jason Brandon. And I'm going to keep saying these matches, yep. but I don't think I'm going to run into one uh, that's that's not great. Right, and it's just going to get better tomorrow night. But you're absolutely right. The matchup of Jason Brandon, Jim Long, their averages last year are within 0.7 of each other throughout the entire year. Uh, you'd be surprised to find out that Jason Brandon has a bit of an advantage in that. Uh, Jim Long, of course, was a finalist last year in this event. Uh, one of the many victims of Jeff Smith's run where he did not lose a single leg on Saturday night. Um, so if we have to keep vamping like this over and over again tomorrow night because someone's doing that, we're not going to be happy with that player. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll be totally fine. But it, it's going to be exciting to see how that match plays out. Yeah, and uh, um, I don't know which one annoys me more uh, in terms of being a nice guy. Um, yeah. They, uh, they could both be nicknamed gem gentlemen. Yeah, I, I probably have to tip uh, Jason Brandon in that. Uh, uh, yep. But but that's just because I haven't had enough time to uh, – uh, or I, I haven't played a, a lot with Jim for him to be a nice guy to me. Well, Jason Brandon uh, – Last year, I went up to him, shook his hand. He was talking to people. And I only wanted to shake his hand, say hi, and then walk away. Uh, ten minutes later, he finds me, and he's like, hey, Sean, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to blow you off when I said hi. I'm like, no, buddy. I just wanted to say hi, and then I walked away on, like, on purpose. You're good, bud. So he even thinks about those types of little things as a, as a person, and that's, uh, it goes a long way. And we should probably bring up uh, our next match, uh, Absolutely. David Cameron and Doug Baim, um, in the same quarter. So we're staying in the uh, the bottom half of the yep. bracket um, with our Canadian number one seed, correct? Absolutely. Uh, David Cameron is the Canadian number one, played in the World Dark Championship uh, this past December. And uh, I'm excited to see how this goes. It It's going to be great. So I don't know if we're ready to send it down to our MC, but if we are, let's send it down to Jay Flats for uh, our second match. Nope, no we're not, so I'm going to stay right here. And that's how we do this, right? We have some fun. Yeah, excited to uh, uh, to see Doug. See um, our director, L. David Reed out there? Yeah, directing traffic. <laughs> um, yeah, excited to see uh, Doug, Doug in action. Um, it looks like we might be ready to send it down, so let's go ahead and do that. Jay Flats, take it away, my friend. It's time for our second matchup of the evening. Let's welcome from Team USA, former U.S. Masters CDC qualifier from Buffalo, New York. Make some noise for Doug Bay. <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug. Champion from Halifax, Nova Scotia. They call him Excalibur, David Cameron.
It's time for match number two, Michigan City. Are you ready? Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Green, your play-play commentator for this second match of the 2024 Cross-Border Darts Challenge live at the beautiful Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana, featuring Canada's number one seed, Excalibur David Cameron, taking on the 2022 Continental Cup finalist, no name, Doug Bame. I'm joined once again by the amazing Gordon Dixon. Gordon, the odds, which is really cool to say, favor the Canadian number one in this match. Do you agree with those odds? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's where it's got to start. Um, I would be surprised. Do you know what they are exactly? I do not. I would be surprised if there was a, uh, a big gap between uh, between these two just because um, the – the level that Doug plays at is not going to be far behind uh, what, what David does. So I would say the average average probably goes to David Cameron, and that's the reason why he's on top. Um, but it, it certainly isn't a big margin between these two. No, you're absolutely right there. The averages last year are speaking that, 89.25 to Doug's 84.32. It, it's going to be a tight battle. I think that the checkouts is going to be kind of a, a big deal on this one. I know it usually is. And a little bit of John Madden you there, but <laughs> it, especially in this, Dave Cameron's going to be able to score. Doug's going to be able to score at times. Who's going to hit those checkouts? Well, in that, I mean, if if you if you look at Dave's performances when he loses, that's again not to John Madden the the situation. That is where he struggles. Yep. Um, so comes down the board well and and misses multiple handfuls. That's the that's the big uh, um, negative with with Cameron. Uh, but other days, I mean, when he's flying high. He's extremely sharp on those. So right, we'll see what, what Dave gentlemen. Cameron we're getting tonight. First leg, it's Doug Bain does hold first. the average for the highest – Game on. Uh, does hold the record for the highest average in the Continental Cup in 2022. Against Jim Long, he averaged 106.34. David Cameron more than capable of averaging over 100 when he's hitting his checkouts and when he's doing that. And uh, the Bain win was a first-round upset, correct? Uh, that was the second round. Second round. He did win so. in the first round as an upset as a 15 seed. So uh, if anything – Doug is used to. It's being hey, it's someone you. who upsets his opponent. First look at Excalibur, Dave Cameron. Start off with a 1-3-4 with a great cover shot. One, his darts will land really flat in the dart board, so uh, he'll switch when that dart is slightly above the board. Doug will do the same thing, but he feels good about his game when his dart is landing above the hey, board, he says. Uh, when it's landing below, he... That's where he struggles. That's when you know he's struggling. One hundred. Steady, steady darts here from Cameron. One more time. How about our MC, Mr. J. Flat? He is. Oh, what a Man, shot in the arm he so is for, for this production. It's I'm, so great. I'm I'm loving it. <laughs> 100. Did you ever think you'd have an MC uh, for a dart tournament chanting the name of the player <laughs> as he's coming out? I love it. No, and the, the long, uh, the long uh, uh, final oh syllable uh, on uh, Doug when he, when he was coming in. So good. All right, Cameron, 67 left. 18 or 10, 32 for leg number one. That would have been for a 15 darter. Will he return? This is a big ass from Doug Bain. You see the uh, boxer pose loosening up the shoulders for this. Not, uh, not going to do it, not close, but oh, can bring it down and uh, set it up. Oh, what a shot. Great recovery after the first, but Cameron still three clear at 16. Oh, we thought it was in. Well, not a double four. Swell. And there it is. A handful missed from Doug David Cameron forces. after a very steady scoring leg. Game's and Doug pressure. gets leg number one. You're going to see Doug Tapping. give it into the crowd. That it, he is an Second animated player. He's first. a very calm human off the hockey. And you can see him settle himself right back down. Uh, Game on. But, yeah, when he's at that line, he's, he's animated. Yeah, relishes these uh, these opportunities. And that's a huge break of throw in leg number one Ace for Doug. One. 
Cameron has to still feel pretty good about the fact that his scoring gave him four darts at a finish. He's not going to feel good that he missed it, but at least he got four darts at the finish. Well, and uh, I mean, I don't want to harp on this too much. I mean, Dave is used to missing doubles, so he he can he can definitely get himself out of it. Um, now, will hey, he is always the, the the question, but this isn't a, this isn't a uh, a scenario that he's unfamiliar with. I hate to mention the bad with the good with Doug in the 2022 Continental Cup uh, finals. He was up on Alex Bowman seven to four before losing that eight to seven. So Doug with a big lead, he has learned how to focus with that lead instead of take those hey, legs off. And you can see it right there. He's almost hanging on every dart, which might be a good thing. It might not be a good thing. Yeah, relatively short format. I mean, it's it's tough to say that with hey, a bunch of players that are one. probably played enough uh, two out of three that uh, – <laughs> Anybody over the pond listening uh, wouldn't understand just how many tournaments we have that are uh, best of three. But uh, in in this level, we're getting hey, very used to playing uh, best of six or race to six, race to seven, eight, nine as the uh, uh, the tournament progresses. So race to five will feel short to these guys. One hundred and eight. And there's a one eighty from David Cameron, his first of the match. Not David quite Bukwa the setup that uh, Bame would have would have liked there. What a shot this would be! It's still on. It's still on. Double ten. Oh, hey, what a one thirty-seven from David Cameron. David Cameron from three clear couldn't hit a double eight to a one three seven checkout. <laughs> it's a fickle game. It's, it's almost Bukwa exactly Bukwa. what John did in the first match. Missed three Game at thirty-two on. and then hit the ninety-two checkout like it was nothing. Breaks the throw right back. And as we say so many times, Gordon, it's only a break of throw if you hold it then the next leg. So Doug will have to do that again if he wants to win this match. And that might be the fattest one he's thrown in a long time. Hey, C1. Good adjustment. See a little, a little shake of the head. Mm-hmm. A rough start for Cameron is trying to drag it back. You can start here in the USA chance. Yeah, we didn't even mention that in our uh, first match, but a uh, point on the board for, uh, for the Americans right off the bat. Which is honestly impressive because last year it took a while for us to say <laughs> yeah, that. I was, I was just going to say, I don't <laughs> know how many matches, gosh. but it wasn't the first like two or three uh, before we could say that last year. I think it was one match total that the Americans won in the first night, and that was Jules, who's really Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So even that one, we got an asterisk. <laughs> 100. He's not the Dutch-American dragon for a reason, but he is one of us. Doug dropping that last one right over the top. Good stacking shot here for 16. Cameron as well, but only going to find 60. So Doug will have a good opportunity to get that first look at a checkout. 100. We'll leave 124, and we'll return for that. What type of pressure will it be under? Will it be maximum? After the way that first start laid, first start laid in there, I thought it was a 180. Yeah, somehow that was a disappointing 140. But uh, still in a great position here. Doug needs the treble 18, finds it for the double bull. Oh, and slides Eight into the 11. Five. Well, this just in. David Cameron now holds the record for the highest checkout in the cross-border darts challenge at the 137. Oh, great double first eight. start. Games on the third leg. Holds his throw. Three After seven. missing four, Fourth leg two for two. Yep. Game and that's 33% for those keeping record at home. <laughs> so 
Doug's still looking for his first 96. 180, his first big, big round. But we said this one would be close. Look at those, uh, look at those averages. Look at those legs. One hundred. These players both on top of each other. Again, just a little nudge to Cameron. After tomorrow night, we will have a 57. Nations Cup winner. Will it be the United States? Will it be Canada? Canada won it very early on night two last year. And we also so will have a fun. new champion because our defending champion, Jeff Smith, is not here this weekend. He is home in Brunswick. I believe doing some exhibitions and some other stuff going on with the Q school. And then who will qualify for the U.S. Darts Masters at Madison Square Garden? Such a big carrot to the winner of this one. I mean, I'm telling you right now, this is the type of situation that Doug specifically – puts a lot of pressure on events like this where you get to qualify for that because he's been there before. He's got a taste. And he has a taste of it, and he yep. wants that taste again. Yep. And he drew the the champion in 2022, Michael Smith, in the first round. Well, he called it. He did. He, he called it. He that. asked for he it, called honestly. That, yeah. <laughs> All right, 148 from Doug. He'll get six from here if he needs it. Fifty-nine. <laughs> we could see that one off. <laughs> see how he felt about that. So steady scoring from uh, from David. Should have this eighty-nine under pressure. Eighty-one. Doug, you require eighty-nine. Not quite the pressure he would have liked after that first dart, but do you think the drop of the dart affects? That type of situation? Ah, it's so tough to say. Gonna be the so many times you've seen him pull up. Oh, 64. still not not really that close on that double bull. Second shot at it. There's Doug's beautiful wife, Erica, in the audience supporting. It's not going to get a dart. So 47. another Did shot for Bame at 25, 25 to level this match. Oh, no. Oh. Leaves the flyer five. That was a high five leave. So if you know how quickly I did that math, it's because I've done that 60. numerous, <laughs> numerous times. So 64, Cameron, double top. Oh, not a good dart. Double 10. 40. And reprieve for Bame. Yeah, and you see the... The uh, acting out of four. wiping the uh, sweat off the brow. Three clear at four. Oh, Madhouse already. Two. I would have liked to have been it. more aggressive on that third dart. Yeah, he really has to. So for a break of throw here for David Cameron, take the three to one lead. And there it is in the bottom leg. corner pocket. David Cameron. You saw what that meant to David. Fifth leg, it's and David you see in Doug's first. posture just from the backside here what it meant to Doug. They're singing a, a dart chant out there, and I love it. 60. How about that? Welcome to darts in the good old U.S. of A. They're almost way too good at the singing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like the people that can actually sing are singing. Right <laughs> yes, now. exactly. And that's it. 60. Doug, so, a chance here. Yeah. It's you, tough to say because it's not the winning leg, but this is probably a must-win leg for – for Doug. One. You took the question right out of my mind. It's it's against the darts. 
but there's such a big difference between 3-2 and 4-1. 100. Especially 3-2 and you're throwing to make it 3-3 versus 4-1 and you're throwing to make it 4-2. That's that's a big difference. 100. And if you mention if you remember what I mentioned earlier, when Doug's throwing the dart below that wire on the treble 20, that's when he feels like he's struggling. 140. Cameron takes advantage of it to leave 141. Can find one in the middle. 60. You cannot. Maybe you require 141. So no finish for Bain when he comes back. So six darts. May only need three. Oh, he's not going to find it. Thought he was going to break Eight his own record there. Nine. Needs to be a lot of pressure on this shot. Again, that first dart falls a little bit below that wire. Nah, he's pressing, pressing, pressing. 82. It's a good Eight cover. You require 52. This for game shot on the and fifth. That is a haymaker David Cameron. from David Cameron. I don't Six know how that Doug fit in there, first. but yeah, I, four to on. one. I'm going to take the chalker's word for it. I'm going to take the official's word for it. He has young eyes. <laughs> That's probably right. <laughs> He's a little closer to the action. <laughs> All right, so Doug has to win four legs on the spin. Yep, the exact scenario 16. we were talking about. And if. Cameron wins this with the average that he currently has, Doug's going to be kicking himself hard because this is the type of match that he would feel like he should win with those averages. And he starts off with a 60, and Dave comes back with a 140. Scalibur in the driving seat. 55. That last start was the first start I think I've seen Doug throw firm in a, in a few legs. You see when David's missing, it's right on the wires. 83. The winner of this match will get the winner of our fourth One match on the night, hundred. Danny Lobby versus Steve Warnock. Lobby coming off a uh, really good showing to, uh, to qualify for the uh, European Tour. 58. Average in the mid to high 90s the entire day. Yeah, such oh, such good Ws. Look at this. No, oh, he's not going to get it. Does bring it down. On a bogey, so Cameron, good to get the first, should get the first look. If he stays straight here. Big dart on dart three. Yeah. Leaves him a very professional shot here to close this one out. Forty-five. And Doug is going to match him to leave 120. 120. So Shanghai for David Cameron to make it a 5-1 victory for him. And he'll get a look. And he hits the 120 the checkout for the match. 5-1 victory for David Cameron over Doug Bame. I know that we expected it to be a little bit closer than that, bud. Yeah, that was uh, that was All another right, one other than the uh, trip and fall at the beginning from uh, Cameron. Efforts. Clean. Yes, yes. And to your next quarter finalist, David Cameron. Proved to himself Cameron. the next two legs, no. took in a, taking it out, one dart. You see uh, our floor uh, floor manager, uh, Jeff Goode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nodding, <laughs> nodding as <laughs> as he's sent him the other way, pushing the player uh, out the uh, the the back of the stage there. All right, well, guys, if you've been with us so far, you're not going to go anywhere. Coming up next will be another great battle of a couple teammates. Uh, the truth, Jacob Taylor, Canada's number two seed, will take on a legend in darts, the Eagle, Mr. Larry Butler. Yeah, what a what a matchup this is going to be. I I kept saying it like every time we we're going to announce these matches, like I love these tournaments because at the end you like the eight people that are not going to be here anymore. Yeah, uh, 
could have won it, and you, you wouldn't have surprised me if uh, if that's where we're at. So 100%. super, super excited. It's going to be a great battle coming your way next, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from the 2024 cross Border Dart Challenge right after this. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today. Luke Humphreys, MVG, Michael Smith. The best against the best. The best against the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best and there is no hiding.
streaming. Oh, everybody, turn around and look upstairs. We're streaming all the way across the world on YouTube. Uh, yeah, we're streaming from Michigan City, LaPorte County, Indiana. If you're just joining us, we've had two exciting matches. We're about to get our third match going. It's eight Americans versus eight Canadians, but only one country will take home the Nations Cup for this challenge. You, what is it? I live there. I live there. <laughs> oh, Canada. Well, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet the players? In our exciting match number three of eight tonight, our first competitor coming out right now is a former CDC Continental Cup champion representing the great state of O-H-I-O. -O. And there's no need for a birdie when they call you the Eagle. Give it up for Larry Butler. One more time, give it up for the Eagle, everybody. And now it's time to meet the Eagles competitor from Team Canada. Former CDC Continental Cup runner up, representing Forrester's Point, Newfoundland. He's not lying. This is Jacob, the truth, Taylor. Welcome back to Michigan City, Indiana for the third match of the 2024 CDC Cross-Border Darts Challenge. This match features the 1994 PDC Match Play Champion, the Eagle, Mr. Larry Butler, taking on his sponsored teammate, Canadians number two, the truth, Jacob Taylor. I'm Sean Green, your play play commentator, joined once again by good stuff, Gordon Dixon. Gordon, this match could turn out to be a great one. Yeah, super excited to, uh, to, to get this one started. Um, again, I think we have a clear favorite in uh, Jacob Taylor. Um, top eight, top ten uh, in terms of averages on the tour last year. Uh, but, man, you can never count out the legend, Larry Butler. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. It, Taylor is the favorite on paper, as he should be. And when I was over in a, in London for the World Arts Championship, I was talking to one of the players who was very upset with us uh, because we have been sending players like Jacob Taylor over to Modus and those types of things to take money from that player. Um, he has said many times that Jacob's too good to not be famous. <laughs> So I, I will say tonight. that I've, I think uh, Jacob, Jacob has first. underperformed Game on. Um, over the last probably year um, from, from what we saw when he, when he burst onto the scene. So I'm, I'm anxious to get back to uh, the true 93. I like it. Well, he's taking on Larry the Eagle Butler, the 1994 PDC match play champion one of the most decorated American dart players in history. And man, he has not really lost much of a step in his game from all the way back then. And that's after uh, 
a lot of health so issues and things like that. The fact that he's able to play the way that he is still at this level, nine-time tour winner. No, nah, Larry, Larry's a soldier, man. The, Larry, the the love and the um, sixty, the competitiveness that he has for this game is uh, is absolutely incredible. See him keep doing it um, year after year, tournament after tournament. One hundred. Because um, he's not just specializing in these long form CDC tournaments. He's he's going to local events. He's yep. going to. Uh, um, other associations, uh, again, talking 96. about playing two out of three. He's going there uh, um, and continuing to play day in, uh, day, in day out over those, uh, over those weekends. 100. We get our first look at our other board referee, Ms. Trish Grezik. We have the Canadian board officials this weekend. And Nick and Trish, love it. 98. Jacob, you require 149. 149 left for the truth. <laughs> 78. Larry, you require 160. This would be a huge start. He can do this. No one of those. Oh. Oh. 100. Jake, you require 71. Trouble 13. 18 for tops. Game shot. There it is. The set. truth takes out leg number one. Larry and again, when first. he is hitting his doubles with the way he scores, he's going to be difficult. Yeah, Larry to, uh, to have his on throw leg here. 96. Good cover shot on dart three. The Truth from Newfoundland. 83. He is, we've been calling him a shrimp fisherman for the last couple of years, but he, that is not the case. He works in the shrimp industry, but not as an actual fisherman. 40. They have uh, quite the dialect. Yes. Up, uh, up in Newfoundland. 97. I had the pleasure of playing the... Uh, the World Cup um, in uh, in Newfoundland, and uh, to go around to the uh, the local establishments, um, we, we weren't in the uh, <laughs> it, it was hit or miss whether or not you could understand <laughs> just what uh, form of English was uh, was being spoken to you. Eighty three, known for their poutine up there, which listen. <laughs> it's okay to, to be known for your poutine. That's delicious. They're also known for a uh, type of rum. 136. Screech. Okay, yeah. That is less delicious. <laughs> I've heard. The eagle trying to grab the big Larry, fish out of the water. you require 170. Well, 160 last leg. We got the first one. We got the first one here. He's got the second one. Bullseye. Oh. 131. Jake, you We're not going to worry about that little guy. <laughs> Good whack at it. Couple oh. 19. Look at this. Look at this. Double 18 Game for a one, five, three. Leg. And you see Larry just throws his hand up. What can Jake you do? Jake throw first. Nothing Game you can do about on. that. Nothing you can do about that. And that uh, 153 actually now breaks the record that was 39. just set in the last match uh, with the 137 checkout. David Cameron, that lasted a very little amount of time. The 153 is now the new, the new number. And I 60. am seeing a pattern here. Jeff Smith uh, defeated Larry first round last year. Okay. And I want to say there was a big check that turned it in the first couple of legs. It is Jeff, so I would, I would imagine so. So, uh, so yeah, 40. the Canadian's not taking it easy on our Larry Butler. 
And right now, the Nation's Cup stands one to one. The first team to get to 57. eight will retain, will win that cup. If it's the Canadians, they will retain it. If it is the Americans, they will win it for the first time in our second 60. CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge. Can again cannot say enough about this venue. Yeah, the hometown crowd. 134. Getting involved. Larry, I'm loving it. Larry looking good against the darts here. 59. Larry, you require 152. Last year, the crowd at Jersey City, New Jersey was fantastic at the White Eagle Hall. This year, at Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana, the crowd, fantastic. That big setup there from Larry. 124. And Trish, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> but she had to ask what, what was it there. <laughs> we're going to do the math there. Larry, you require 28. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's hard to remember those types of things on stage. That was a weird one. Double seven. Oh, no. You don't want to give the truth a shot at the 144. You already hit the 153. Jake, Interesting. I, th I thought he would go back to bust that, but does uh, choose to leave the four. Jacob not going to punish this time. 120. But we'll put a lot of pressure Larry on this four. You require four. See if he can land on this perch. Yay, and he does. He shot in the third and leg. it's a break of throw for the legend, Larry Butler. Larry he gets the first leg first on the board. The fourth leg. And we'll be Game throwing on. to tie it back up. Back on throw. This is the second year that uh, this has taken place in the United 41. States, even though it's the Cross Border Darts Challenge. The crowd last year was also a very heavy favorited uh, USA crowd, as you would imagine. It did not matter last year. 140. We'll see if the crowd uh, can do something about it this year. You can hear the cheers, though, are for both players when there's big, big shots. 136. There was a lot of excitement. Uh, built into the community about this. Whenever you went to a local uh, venue around here, there was a flyer 100. up on the wall. Well, just the, the turnout in general, I think, uh, speaks to the excitement of, uh, of this event. And, uh, yeah, I mean, 46. dart players, certainly we have our favorites and we have uh, our, our rooting interests, but um, if somebody's putting on a show... Uh, like these two players are um, in a competitive match, you have to support everybody. 100%. Yeah, actually, uh, Doug Bain is staying right across the street is where his Airbnb is from the venue. And he said that their uh, host emailed them and said, hey, just so you know, if you're interested there and you're looking for something different, oh, that's there is an event ha happening right across the street. And uh, he was like, yeah, not going to be too different for me. <laughs> that's uh, that's that an great? awesome story. 133. Big 133. Jake, you require 106. 106 left for Taylor. 86. Would have left 32. Now we might go back to the 20s here. 58. Larry, you require 52. So big moments in this match. Early on for Larry Butler, and he misses the big number right out the gate. So only one dart at a double he'll get. Tops. 32. And Jake that might cost him. 48. Yeah, it's got to be a frustrating turn of events there for Larry. Maybe coming back. 16. A Maybe. Good Larry, you require like. 20. Double 10 for the win. And to automatically make this the closest match so far of the Cross border darts challenge in 2024. Oh, Gitchy darts. No score. Oh, Jake, boy. you require Gitchy 32. Darts from Larry there. A lot of shoulder in each one of those. Game shot in the fourth leg. And the true settles down and hits it. Breaks the throw right back. Jake to throw first. And now, Game on. real chance to make this four to one with the throw in this leg. You can see the average is not what we are expecting after, out of either of these players, 30. to be fair. But at the same time, anytime when there's close averages like this, 
They're within point zero one of each other right this moment. Uh, it's always a good time. It's always a good match. 95. Yeah, a lot of respect between uh, these two. Could uh, contribute to, uh, to some of that. 11. That is something we do not see hardly ever from Jacob Taylor. Usually very money on the 20s and staying straight on the 20s. 133. And the Eagle has switched the 19s, and that has really paid off for him. You've seen that out of Stowe Bunts in the past where he'll rely on the 19s 16. when he's struggling. And right now Larry's doing the exact same thing. Looking up on dart three and hits the treble. 121. Big darts from Larry Butler. We'll leave one five two. 42. Yeah, I, I went Score back. Uh, on Larry's um, side, it was, it was, it was irritating me. I couldn't remember the uh, scenario last year. But uh, it was the first leg where Larry was up big. Uh, Larry, you big require 149. Two, two treble turns and a 135 finish. Um, after Larry, it looks like uh, missed four uh, to to start that game off, and that was the difference in the entire match. And then, of course, you saw what happened from there. Jeff Smith didn't lose another leg at all. <laughs> One hundred and four. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Larry, you require fifty-two. Well, it's going to be double six. Not what he wanted, but. No score. He'll be back with 52 again. Jake really struggling in this leg. Back on 218 after 15 darts. And I'm pretty sure I've said that one 100. time in my life of doing there commentary you for 52. the truth. All right. Much there, better. Yep. Double 16. Game shot. And he hits it, leg. breaks again the throw of Jacob Taylor. Larry we got ourselves a match. First. Game yeah, on. The fall. So Larry throwing to equalize the match. Put this one back on throw. And you see this 45. from Larry a lot, probably more than anybody. Larry knows his game. When he knows that he's struggling on a on a number, he is not afraid to to switch around to uh, either break out of that or or find a find a number that he can be more consistent on. Well, worked on the 19s for him for a little bit, and now he's starting to go a little bit left and right on him. 11. The way Trish said that was almost rude. <laughs> yeah, it was a little judgy. <laughs> it was a little. Felt, felt a little judgy. 96. But in fairness, he said, she said the, uh, the same 11 for uh, Jacob yep, Taylor. She did. There's Larry straightening it out a little 95. bit. 95. You definitely don't want to do uh, the army when it comes to playing darts and go left, right, left, right. Trust me. Larry's starting up on 20s there because of the 180 left 170. Yep, still have to be cognizant of the, uh, the proper setup shots. 97. Great cover on the last dart. 116 left when he returns. Ninety-five. Jake, you require 116. Larry trying to go fishing. He's got a dart at the bull so far. And he'll get a look. Sixty. Larry, you require 170. The fish escaped the claw on the bullseye in the last time he shot this. Just going to try and put some pressure on. Well, you're still trying to show off, find that double ball. 56, double top. And another Big break of throw. throw. Big break of throw there. Puts him on the hill. Jake to throw first. Game on. Larry now needs to win three on the spin, two against the darts. A monumental task. Especially now. 140. Big 140 to start from Jacob Taylor. Dayton, Ohio native. 
Mr. Larry Butler. 68. You name it, he's done it in the dart world as far as compete, competing. 88. Jacob on 303, starting on the uh, 20s. Just like uh, his other namesake, not too worried about the uh, the uh, proper shots on some of those larger numbers. And that's a part of his game, honestly. He, he is so used to really hammering the 20s that he doesn't think about those shots on the 303, and I think that's the next evolution of his game, but I think you said it correct. This year, he's he's definitely struggled a little bit more than he has in years past. Well, and we see here, I think both of these guys are going to look at the the final averages um, unless something crazy happens and uh, and think that this was a winnable match. 100%. And he'll be back with 60 left to win the match. All Larry can do is put a lot of pressure on. Tops for the match. Double 10 for the win. Jacob Taylor, the truth, puts another point on the board for the Canadian team as they now take a 2 to 1 lead in the Nations Cup and a 5 2 victory for Jacob Taylor over Larry Butler. So Jacob Taylor will play again tomorrow evening and he will play against. The winner of Leonard Gates and Jake McMillan, which is a match coming up later on. I believe that's the last match on board for tonight. But I'm surprised by the averages. Yeah, not the not the standard that we uh, that we expected to see from those uh, those two players. But uh, um, again, favorite wins, um, just not enough from uh, from Larry. But again, I think another match where you can see that. A race to five, a couple of misses here, a couple of misses there, opening up uh, an opportunity, um, and your opponent steps in, can really hurt, and that's, uh, that's exactly what we saw from, uh, um, from our two combatants there. Well, coming up next, we have American PDC card holder uh, from Terre Haute, Indiana, so in his home state, Mr. Danny Lobby Jr., and he's taking on uh, Steve Warnock, the sniper. So stay tuned. We'll be back with that match right after this. Is the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place.
me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
If you're just joining us on our live stream, we are in Michigan City, Indiana. As CDC proudly presents the Cross Border Darts Challenge. It's time for our fourth match. Michigan City, are you ready? Our first competitor is a CDC Nations Cup winner, representing Catherine's Ontario. Please welcome Steve the Sniper Warnock. to meet his competitor. How you feeling, Michigan City? How are you? This is our fourth match. We're almost halfway through tonight's competition, and our next competitor is a former CDC Continental Cup champion, representing his home state right here, Indiana. They call him DL2. Please welcome Danny Lobby. Hello everyone, welcome back to the fourth match of the 2024 CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge live at the beautiful Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana. This match features American PDC card holder and Indiana native, Mr. Danny Lobby Jr. taking on the sniper, Steve Warnock. I'm Sean Green, honored to be your play-by-play -play commentator and I'm excited to bring back into the booth my partner in comms, the incredible Gordon Dixon. Gordon, this should be a quick match. Oh my gosh, both these players do not mess around when it comes to throwing their darts. I, again, we've got a, we've got a clear, uh, I think, uh, chalk here with, uh, with Danny Lauby. Again, just qualifying for his first uh, European tour, um, running through Luke Woodhouse, Simon Whitlock, and Ryan Meikle uh, on his way to qualifying for that event. Uh, but you can never count this man out. Steve Warnock, they call him the sniper. This man is accurate. And he's really good at sniping giants. And Danny Lobby Jr., would be, it would be a giant killer to take out uh, American PDC cardholder this early in this event. The only thing about Danny is he does throw with the wrong arm. He does. Well, we can't hold that against him. Uh, I have a few partners in, in other things I do that are all left-handed, and they're the weird ones, but that's fine. Uh, it does make the camera angle a little bit different and difficult. But, yeah, Danny, in his route there on the Euro Tour, averaged in the mid to high 90s the entire time. If he can, if he can keep that consistency up, he's going to be very tough to beat this entire tournament. Do you think the jet lag coming back from England – yesterday after being over there for so long will hurt our two PDC card holders and Jules and Danny? If, if that wasn't something that they were already kind of used to, if this was Danny's first year of going back and forth or Jules 
Um, they're they're going on at least two years in in playing events over there and coming back to play other events. So I I really don't. I mean, um, I, I also hope that neither of them are leaning on that um, because if that starts to creep into your mentality, that can that can really uh, uh, sour some of these events for you. We're, look it? we're looking at just yeah. scoring. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Then you require 24. We're going to go with no issues. We thought that was in. Game's and he hits the leg. second dart. Daniel Double six goes in for a 14 Steve dart play. hold of throw in leg number one. Steve's going to have to pick it up and find a good opportunity to break the throw of Danny Lobby if he wants to win this. 93. 93 right now might not be enough with the way Danny's threw in leg number one. Yeah, look at that. Two treble turn to come right back at him. Steve, we're only a leg and three darts into this. But your, your opponent uh, scoring the way Danny is can start to wear on you. You start to press early in legs just because you know how quickly they're going to run down the board. And just as we do the big wind up, uh, Danny gives a little bit of breathing room back to, uh, to Steve. Steve's sitting back on 308. 140 One puts him on a bogey number. But the only thing that can hurt that is if Danny hits a 180. And he will not do that. One so six from 168 for Steve Warnock. To get the first leg on the board for him. Terre Haute, Indiana native for Danny Lobby Jr., which if you're wondering if it's super close to here, the answer is no. It's about four and a half hours or so away from uh, where we're currently located in Michigan City. About as far north in Indiana as you can get. Or about, oh, I don't know. 12 minutes from the Michigan border. Give or take. Yep. Yeah, I actually, I drew, I drove just as far in Ohio as Game's I did in Indiana. On the second leg. And what a finish Steve there, 114. Warnock. Shanghai's the 19. For Steve, I did yeah. not see that coming. And that's a type of checkout that Danny will actually appreciate. He is someone 16. that studies the game and studies those uh, different style of checkouts. You might even see 76 left from Danny and him go double 19, double 19 at times. Yeah, double double is uh, has crept in, oh, I think, one. appropriately um, in some places uh, into uh, into this game. Some doubles we will never like, one depending on the game, but definitely for checkouts in in 01 with that bigger target, um, with how much control these guys have. Well, and that's that's the key. Um, I mean, you have to be at a certain level to where that larger target hey, makes more sense. Yep. Um, if you're only ten percent on your doubles, typically you don't want to go double double. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've learned. Forty-one. No matter how cool it sounds, <laughs> the frustration remains the same. <laughs> that local crowd getting. Getting involved again. 140. Good recovery there for Steve after a first start low. 100. Huge shout out to our production team backstage. They do all the hard work for us. Uh, Jeff McMahon, Will Stewart, and of course, L. David Irite. 45. The production team, the the staff in general is always fantastic. And of course, we don't have to do math because uh, Nick, Trish, and Angelo get to do that for us. Wow. Every once in a while, I try to get a little bit froggy with it and call it out before they do. Typically, I'm wrong. Danny will have 100 left to hold his throw. Steve's going to try and put some pressure on it. Hey, it's one. Oh, I Danny thought he fixed it 100. real good after the, after the first dart. 60. We Steve even set up a tops tops opportunity to do it, nine. but that's because his first dart was high, and his dart pitches up a pretty good ways. Ninety left, trouble eighteen. 
Nope. Went to the 20. Big Interesting move with two darts left there. Then you require four seeds. Tops for a lobby. Double 10, his favorite double. Eight. And he sticks leg. it. I like the finger lobby. point. This is good. Fourth legged Steve to throw first. Game the on. ferret would be proud. <laughs> yes, he would. Danny is a bit of a showman. He's a very shy, quiet person off the line for the most part. Uh, but no, he's a drummer by, by heart and, and a rock and roll musician. And so when he's on a stage, it, that's, that's his element. 96. Yeah, Danny very comfortable in playing, uh, playing darts at a high level for, for some years now. 41. 134. Big 134 from Lobby. Those two trouble visits have been uh, paramount so far. And if you want to look at kind of one of the main factors that I'm 100. seeing here between the Winners and the losers, except for the big outlier. The first sign average of John Part is the highest first sign average of the six players that have played so far. And that's a 96.72 first sign average for John Part. And he won one leg of darts, and that is what uh, Stoke can do to you. Denny, you require 131. Yeah, just too many missed darts. Uh, the story of the first couple of matches here tonight. 57. The setup there from Danny, not exactly what he wanted to do. He probably wanted to put more damage into that. Steve, though, happy to just put some pressure on. Another one would be perfect. 100. Danny requires 74. Ooh, goes for the double Eight 10 and hits it in two. Danny Big darts Lobby. for Lobby. Takes a 3-1 to one lead. Breaks the throw of Steve Warnock. Fifth leg gets Danny to throw first. Game on. A little bit of separation. So far, the closest score line 16. in these first four, three matches was five to two. Something we weren't really expecting coming into this. But I'm going to be honest. I feel like a couple of the matches later on tonight uh, have the feeling of Nine being to two. some very, very good battles. Some Jason Brandon, Jim Long is going to be a doozy. And of course... I'm really looking forward to the Jake McMillan Leonard Gates match to end the night. Yeah, so much firepower again. Um, I said it earlier. If you if you look at these at the end of the night, uh, of all the players that have gone out, if if you'd have told me in an alternate universe that they won, yep, it, it wouldn't have been. One hundred and fourteen. Are you serious? Yeah, like no, so not at and all. so. Like yeah. I, it just it just wouldn't happen. So they've. Uh, Got such a good level here with the CDC anymore. You're seeing it. We had five representatives from the World Art Championship Denny require uh, last year and, and from North America. It seems like that number is starting to grow again. 41. We have three card holders, three card holders currently for the PDC, one of them in Mr. Danny Lobby Jr. Yeah, anytime I can I can see tweets of uh, European players getting frustrated with the number of non-European qualifiers, uh, that's that's Four exciting. One. Yep. Music to our Denny ears. require one hundred and twenty. Whether that's an influx of Australians or uh, Asians or or Americans. One hundred. Well, his shot at tar tops there was uh, in his. Scoring power was miles ten. off. Yeah. He was setting up double 10. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> he knew he was going to come back. 100. And you can see, see the frustration. Required yeah, Steve, Steve just off here uh, this evening. Um, still averaging almost into the 80s. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, I don't know if that was the right decision at that time with Steve not, uh, not on a finish. The last thing you want to do to your opponent who is looking as frustrated as Steve is, is 
do January something like that to potentially put him back into it. The problem, he's not. No oh, score. Well, yeah, this is. Uh, Steve, you require 158. This is one of those times where I, you're you're letting Steve live. Oh, another one of those. How, how dirty would this be? 134. Denny requires. Well, that single five. one better to go in this time. And back to the double. No uh -oh. score. Steve Warnock, 24 to break Steve Danny's throw. And Switching. Denny again was miles ahead. Yeah, for what could be a 24 darter. Game shot on 15. Turns out go. to be a 22. Steve but. Uh, Six legged Steve to throw first. Game yeah, on. just one of those board management calls at. From frustration to hope. Yeah, didn't didn't like Danny not busting there to to get three clear back at that double ten that he's been hot on mm -hmm. so far. One hundred. Will that be a giant turning point? One hundred. Just a stumbling block. Certainly will be felt in the averages for the remainder of the Absolutely. of the match, uh, with Danny almost uh, hey, cresting that uh, that ton for a lot large portion of the first four legs. One hundred and forty. And as a drummer, you can almost see the rhythm that he throws with, and. For certain dart players that throw fast, you do need a good rhythm on top of that. You need a good rhythm and you Eight. need good math skills, and Danny is not lacking in either of those. Grew up with the game. His dad, Six another American years. legend in darts, uh, Cujo. Who I'm sure will continue to tell Danny until... Uh, Third Danny six. reaches this. He has played a more World Dart Championship than d than his son. <laughs> Sixty. So here we go, Steve. A chance here. Two or four left. You put a lot of pressure on the one four one from Lobby. He did hit that for a nine darter earlier this year Fifth in a four. local Denny event in England. Not going to hit it here, though. 100. Yeah, good last. Stuck Steve, with it. you require 150. Another one of those. Oh, what about oh. 36? 90. Then you require 41. He needs to be clean here. Game shot on the sixth and leg. Extremely, extremely clean there from Danny Lowry. That was the rocks. You Game see on. the hometown crowd react. He needed that one. 100. I don't think we can uh, officially make it a stumbling block, that uh, fifth leg now. But it's uh, it's looking that way. Eighty one. And again, Steve, seventy seven is just not one hundred and forty. Not his quality. Um, typically, last year he was five points above that in eighty two. And again, there's moments of brilliance from all these players, but Steve, one hundred and forty has been a giant killer. Quite often. 100. Steady as he goes. Going to wrap it up here on throw. 140. Denny require 161. This would be a way to finish, but let's try and set it up. 81 left. 99. He'll come Steve back with 62. If Warnock does not hit this 140. He won't. I? One. Yeah, I thought that second one might have been in there. 62. 62 if he comes back. 
or I'm sorry, 40 if he comes back. I thought he was going to do that. If he tops. And he hits it for the match. Danny Lobby Jr. Five to two victory for him over Steve Warnock. And uh, he will move on to round Keep number two for the for first Steve time Warnock. in this cross border darts challenge. Another tick for the Americans. Absolutely. Makes it two to two on the score line. Danny so after four Lobby. matches, the Nation's Cup is all tied up to a piece. And we have a matchup. Set to go for tomorrow. David Cameron will take on Danny Lobby Jr. Oh boy. Yeah. That's a that's a heavy match. Well, I listen, that this has been a taste so far of what's to come. Cross border darts challenge here in Michigan City, Indiana. Coming up next, the US number one seed, Mr. Alex Spellman, the Jackal, will be taking on Super Sly, Sylvain Bordeaux. We'll be right back with more, including that matchup, right after this. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today. Is the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place.
Uh, if you're joining us on the live stream at home, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Champ Darts. Do it now. I'll wait. Take your phone out. Go to Instagram and at Champ Darts. And when you post photos and videos, use hashtag Champ Darts. We're here in Michigan City. We're getting ready for our fifth matchup. This crowd is out of control. It's time to bring out our competitors for the fifth match here. Making his cross-border debut from Montreal, Quebec. Please welcome, for the first time at a cross-border event, Sylvain Super Sly One more time, give it up for Sylvain, everybody. And now it's time to meet Sylvain's competitor. He is a former CDC Continental Cup champion from the great state of North Carolina. They call him the Jackal. Welcome, Alex. Spellman! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Green, your play-play commentator for the fifth match of the 2024 Cross-Border Darts Challenge live at the beautiful Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana. And it features Super Sly, Sylvain Bordeaux, making his debut on stage, taking on the 2022 Continental Cup champion. And uh, bad draw for Sylvain, the U.S. number one seed, Alex Spellman. I'm joined once again by the amazing Jordan Dixon. Gordon? The odds favor the American number one in this match. Safe to say that is done for numerous reasons, as Alex is the favorite overall. Second over favorite overall to win the entire thing. Yeah, no, I, I think that comes as no surprise. Um, uh, as we start to set these odds, um, you need to have uh, some known quantities. Alex uh, kind of fits that bill to a T uh, when it when it comes to uh, the CDC and the success that he's had, um, the standard that he plays at. Sylvain, a, a little bit more of an unknown quantity, but uh, um, you don't get here by not being good at darts. 100%. And talking to Sylvain earlier, uh, he said that the darts were flying great and that he hopes Alex maybe overlooks him a little bit so that he can sneak up on him. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. But first leg, I think Alex, Alex to throw first. He never is going to overlook anyone. Well, yeah, I was Game just going to say, of all the players, um, that is not uh, something that I think Alex Spellman is going to be uh, susceptible to. Hey, there he is. 65. We just scooch him into the yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, we got him in there. And you're absolutely right. Alex is very analytical. He is very... Uh, Technically sound as a dart player. He coaches darts now as his uh, as his day to day, and he's made a lot of players or a lot of yeah a lot of dart players better in the game uh, doing so. One hundred. He'll coach himself up on, on that line. That's what he does naturally as coach. So he will. He knows exactly what his throw. What's wrong with his throw when he throws it? Four which is a five. dangerous player to be with, or to play against. Yeah, the standard that uh, that Alex wants to play at, um, 
is always high. One uh, not that hundred. anyone tries to play poorly, but there are definitely people that uh, that play the player uh, rather than the board. Um, and Alex knows what he can do when he's uh, when he's really flying high. So one hundred. He looks to uh, to continue to hone his skill so that uh, he continues to uh, to play at those levels, which is um, something to see. I mean, it's it's incredible Four, it's what uh, what he's done uh, over the last three years. Absolutely, and I think that that is something that kind of came to head at the World Arts Championship this past year in December. He averaged 99 16. in a losing effort to Ryan Joyce, who had to average 102 to beat him. Uh, I had the p distinct honor of listening to them talk after the match was over, uh, and Ryan complimented Alex more than anything 100. on his ability to finish. He's like, it's not every day that I get out finished, and I believe Alex checked out at like 58%. It, so there's not a big weakness to Alex's game. 42. Alex, you require 188. Uh, 88. 24. 76. He will return with double six left. That can get a little bit shaky. Nobody likes double three. Still fain, still just trying to get settled. First time on stage. 83. Alex, you require 12. Montreal, Quebec. And Alex on the first leg. right on the Alex inside of that wire leg, it's wins leg number one. It's just Jamar. a hole to throw at the end of the day. Yeah, 19 darts. Um, Alex certainly will take the leg, but not, uh, not what he's looking for here. So we have mentioned multiple times about the odds. And again, the exciting news that has broken this weekend is the fact 100. that eight states right now are able to bet on the cross-border darts challenge, uh, which is extremely exciting. And that includes DraftKings. But you have to head on over to nxtbets.com forward slash play CDC and get signed up now to take advantage of sportsbook sign-up bonuses. The sign-up offers may not be available yet in all states. They're not available outside of the United States. You have to be 21 hey, years or older. C1. Please refer to the affiliated operators, TNC. It's void wherever prohibited. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER so that you are not one hundred and forty. Uh, handle those situations. Nobody's got time for that. Alex, way back in this one. 83. Sylvain, you require 127. Almost a flip-flop of leg number one. And this is something 99. that I see all the time uh, on the local show that I do is dart players take a couple of legs to get settled in. The bright lights, uh, especially, I mean, it's heightened in this one, right? The stage, the crowd behind you. 96. Um, Sylvain, you require but eventually it just becomes a game of darts. And everything else just kind of tunes out. And Sylvain knows how to play darts. As he hits Games on the second double leg. 14 Sylvain and Bordeaux. holds his throw Third there. Gets Alex 14 throw dart hole to throw. Game on. So the standard is definitely there for Sylvain. Can he consistently do it? The defeat. 96. One of the... One of the favorites in this tournament. Mr. Alex Bum. I love hearing the crowd. Oh my I was just about to say that. Like the even like random yell outs that I know probably are annoying are wonderful. <laughs> yep. Yep. For so long, um it was just uh, there was just no excitement. I I, I think it was all um hey, Dart IQ one. as far as the crowd was concerned on uh on what was allowable and, and and how and when you can get rowdy, which we still have some stuff to work out. Yep, we sure but, do. Because uh, the right answer is all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're certainly not uh, such a sing songy uh, no. <laughs> group, but uh, I think we can uh, we can add our own flavor to uh, 
uh, to how we watch 16. the darts, which is uh, which is awesome to see. One hundred percent that uh, evolution, and it is great to see the fancy dress in the crowd. The average Joe Jim, average Joe's Jim uh, wardrobe. Seen a couple Fourth other three. costumes out there tonight. I will tell you the one thing that shocked me the most at Ali Pally was that it's about ninety five percent dress up for fancy dress to five percent. And those are just the VIP people who don't. Alex Spellman, that's a 180 from Spellman. The first in a few matches, I believe, a couple matches. And Spellman can do that on the regular. 61, Alex will require 84. Alex will be looking for trouble 20, 64. Doesn't need to finish. Or look at the 16s, 48, 52. Good setup. There's some fancy dress right there. It's a dart board. Dangerous thing to be in a dart hall. It is. 133, Alex, you require 32. Gotta love it. <laughs> Just a little north. Double eight. And it's on, it on dart line. three with a little shake Alex of the head Stone. that it took all three Four darts. To throw first. It's an 18 dart hole to throw, Game but on. that'll work as you see. There's more fancy dress in the crowd. This is where 77. Sylvain has to break the throw at some point, of course, but he absolutely can't really afford to have his throw broken with Alex going first in the match. It Puts him down two breaks, which against that talented, of a player, or that talented of a player, it's really difficult in a race to five. Yeah, we've seen it all night. Yep. As soon as that separation happens, it, it's gone. So that's two darts in the 140. Corner. Alex looks like he's... Ninety-four. Sylvain from Montreal. So fluent in French and one hundred and twenty-three English. Forty-one. Sylvain, you require 161. So a little bit of a lull here from Spellman on uh, on the scoring. This is uh, Sylvain's leg. 99. It's not something we usually see out of Alex Spellman. As you see, we have a few uh, younger crowd members, which honestly I like to see most of all. Yeah, there was a there was a good moment there when uh, Alex was doing his walk. Sylvain, you require sixty-two. He gave uh, a young lady a handshake. And my man there, dressed up in the garb, the whole nine yards. Love it. Double sixteen. Game and Sylvain on the fourth does leg. tie it back Sylvain up, two to two. two. Fifth leg gets the Alex disparity the there and those averages. Yep. Game on. And that's after a very rough first leg from Sylvain. Yeah, Sylvain playing it up to the uh, to the crowd. There off to the uh, side as Alex gets started here in the uh, fifth leg. That's a good first start from Sylvain. 140. Had a few pretty decent runs this year on tour. Definitely put his name on everyone's radar. 140. Just like we couldn't pronounce Doug Bain's name a couple years ago. Sylvain took a little bit of a while for me to, to learn how to pronounce, but no, I'm never going to forget it now. He's a talented dart player that has uh, really kind of run away with once he received his tour card. Kind of cemented himself. Which is no easy thing to do uh, with the standard that they, uh, they play. Uh, 
Alex frustrated, was not able to uh, to leave a finish there. Started appropriately and surprised he switched he on the start too. Yeah, felt felt he was blocked. Yay, easy three. It's interesting because he could have just teed up with a single there to the last start of the trouble, but it's not going to harm him. It looks like. For that little guy. Hey, it's you one. Yeah, back in the driver's seat. 87 after 12. So Dane is looking around, checking the score. 100. Put some pressure on 87. 87. I only get one dart at the bowl. Just kidding. Double five. Danny's on the fifth it. leg. What a dog. Oh, Great stunning. finish. Like it's to throw first. The jackal. Great finish. Game on. That one felt like it was slipping away from him. Comes up with a nice clean finish there. 100. Yeah, you were talking about uh, Sylvain coming onto the uh, the scene. Anytime there was a uh, tournament. Oh, might have a 180 coming in. 100 and R. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> when when uh, when I was in my playing days, um, if it was something that we weren't attending, or or even if we were, uh, if we were mapping out who we thought would be in the uh, uh, the later stages of the tournament, it would always be seven people that we could name, and then we would always save a spot for a random Canadian. There because you go. It, because it always it always seemed to work Look at out this. that way. Spellman. 108 is on the nine. Six perfect darts from Spellman. How exciting. Listen this to that. place would erupt. Yeah, listen to that crowd. I mean, yeah, I would erupt if these three darts 39. go in. 141 left for Alex, Alex Spellman. 141. It's Look still that. on. Triple, triple 19. Double 12. One time. Yeah. The nine. Oh, there it is. He is the nine. Oh, Alex Spellman, a nine darter. Oh my gosh, what a and before leg! Before he even pulls the darts out of the board, he high fives the entire crowd. Oh my gosh, what a shot! Historic moment at the cross border darts Seven challenge. Legs. Alex to throw first. Absolutely incredible. Look at the crowd. What a moment. They know what they just saw. And even though it was for a break of throw, the one thing I will point out real quick is that Sylvain Bordeaux, after dart one went in, hands were raised, and he was looking for it. What a finish from Alex Spellman. Did I hear a niner? Was there a niner in there? Well, he was not calling from a walkie-talkie, I'll tell you that much. He screamed it. Absolutely incredible. And the fact that he's able to settle down here and throw these darts. How about another 180 from Spellman? Three in the last two legs. He's gone 180, 180, 141, 140, 180 in his last five turns. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy to say that uh, Alex Spellman is uh, firmly settled in now. Ninety-six to do with one dart. One hundred and five. Seventy-six when he comes back. Was trying to follow the nine with the ten. <laughs> I don't even know what the guy said, but no, I have no it idea. was funny to me anyway. I just enjoy it. Doesn't Alex seem to have affected uh, Sylvain. So cheers, cheers to him. Seventy-six for the match. Cap off a absolutely amazing match for Alex Spellman. And there it is, a 12 darter to finish the, after the nine. But Gordon, we got our first nine, buddy. Yeah, no, that was absolutely incredible. Awesome, awesome to see. And look at that average. Look at the losing yep. average here from Sylvain. New to the stage. Would have destroyed any of the other yeah, averages. Yeah, I, I mean, would have, would have had a leg up for sure in any of the, uh, the other matches. Um, absolutely incredible to see. So, so cool to be a part of it. For those of you who are just joining us on YouTube, go back about three minutes and just watch that amazingness take place as Alex Spellman just hit a nine-darter 
to take a four to one or four to two lead and break the throw heading into uh, the deciding leg for him. Five to two victory for Alex Bellman. My goodness, man, I'm excited. No, Those are the moments so that we cool. wait for. Well, if you think that's uh, that's something, there might be some more greatness coming your way as the Dutch Dragon, Jules Van Dongen, will take on the Iron Rock, Keith Way, coming up next. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from the Cross Border Darts Challenge right after this. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today. Is the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place.
Oh, let's go. Bang, bang, clap. Come on. Louder. We're live streaming again. Let's go. I want you to make some noise for the kids in the crowd. Give it up for the kids in the crowd. Join us. Give it up for the kids in the crowd. Air guitar, everybody. The crowd is still recovering from that last match, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible what we witnessed, those 180s and that perfect nine darts, everybody. But it's time for us to focus on our next match. Our next two competitors are ready to take the stage for their chance at victory. Coming up first, former CDC match play champion from the great state of Missouri, known as the Dutch Dragon. It's Jules Van Dongen. Give it up for the Dutch Dragon. This crowd is lit AF. They're crazy over here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to bring out our next competitor. He is a CDC Nations Cup winner from Burton, New Brunswick. Please make some noise for Keith, the Iron Rock Way. Are you ready? 
Welcome back to Michigan City, Indiana for the sixth match of the 2024 CDC Cross-Border Darts Challenge. This match features the Dutch Dragon, PDC card holder Jules Van Dongen, taking on the Iron Rock, Keith Way. I'm Sean Green, your play-play -play commentator, and I'm joined once again by good stuff, Gordon Dixon. Gordon, well, we had a little bit of a good moment in the last match. Not yes, bad. something happened, right? Not bad. Um, and then... With the way Jay Flash just continues to introduce people, I, I'm having the time of my life here. I don't know about you, bud. But, Gordon, this is the year of the dragon, according to the Chinese New Year. Could this also be the year of the Dutch dragon? Man, uh, top of the shop when it comes to the uh, 2023 averages. Um, I don't want to call him a paper dragon, um, but uh, there's, there's certainly an element to that. I just don't know um, how – how well he does in these events. Um, he has made strides, just giant strides Aim over there. Aim on. So, uh, over, over, uh, over the pond. So I, I, again, can't count him out on, on this, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, but we're going to have to see him actually do it uh, at some point. 45. 100%. And he's not taking on a, a slack player either. Keith Way is the number four seed uh, for a reason for Canada. And it's because... <laughs> 100. Uh, he's thrown a lot of great darts this year, or this past year. He has his own darts. They're and he's throwing them really well. Yeah, um, Keith Keith is staple uh, for for the Canadian dart throwers for for a while now. Again, uh, as you mentioned, the fourth seed, not for um, any reason other than consistent 100. performances. Um, this is the first time where I think the. Uh, um, the, the player with the um, seed next to him yep. is probably in the most danger I, um, yeah. out, out of what we've seen thus far. Jules was the odds-on favorite to win the tournament heading into this. 100. Uh, so I would 100%, I believe the, um, the odds would, would say that as well. However, Jules starting off a little bit slow, 60. comparatively speaking, to Keith. And... You know, there is a little extra pressure on Jules, and I think it's because he's a PDC card holder, because of the expectations he has for 60. himself. And there's a lot of Dutch Dragon jerseys in that crowd tonight, which is really cool to see. But it also puts just a little extra. 99. On Keith, it. you require you 141. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, no doubt. I mean, that's. Um, I'm always. Um, very happy to see 41. when somebody Jules, lives up to uh, expectations um, because I think that's that's an incredibly hard thing to do. And the people that make it look easy are silly. I mean, that, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible Th that, uh, that some Hitler? people are able to do that. Oh, oh my gosh, in <laughs> spades. Yes. In absolute spades uh, with, with that kid. Top stops? Nope. 80. Jules, oh, you got you second tops. 78. 78 to hold his throw. 66 left. And he misses the big number. He's not going to get a shot at it. So. 38. Keith, you require 20. So Keith Way, a real opportunity here early on. One that you have to Game take if you can. He does. Leg. Break a throw out the gate for Keith, Keith Way. Take the throw first. Game on. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Nothing too flashy from from Keith there either. So I think uh, the only thing flashy about that leg was his, his sweet haircut he's got. <laughs> he did get a clean cut. I can tell. Looks nice. He's crispy. He's crispy. I think he realized he was playing against the uh, movie 96. star looks of Mr. Jules Van Dongen. Bowles the movie is in the house. Jules. Playing a role in that film, playing as himself. And they are set to film their se scenes on Sunday. So I know that he's got a lot of great stuff going on. 57. And it's hard to kind of focus all that in for what really matters most to him in this moment, and that's winning this match. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna play that role, 100. no pun intended, mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to juggle that kind of stuff. And I think way too many people forget that Jules is still pretty 60. new to the dart scene overall. I mean, yes, he's had great success, but 
five years, I believe, has been his, about the amount of time he's been in the spotlight here. 45. Ooh, super slack there from Keith. Had a real opportunity there to put some real distance between him and Jules. 57. Yeah, I, again, it's it's tough to be uh, critical of a player uh, on the level that, uh, that Jules is on. Um, Wayne Martle said something one time, and I'm going to botch the, the actual uh, quote, but he's never surprised when Jules does something amazing, and he's never surprised when Jules does something underwhelming or something, something to, that, uh, uh, to that effect. And I, I just, I've always thought that that was a really good way of describing uh, Jules because the highs are definitely high, but the averageness Jules, is you require 134. Always it, pretty average. <laughs> for the best players in the world, typically they have a very high ceiling and a pretty high floor on averages. And I would say that's the one thing that Jules still struggles with a little bit is raising that floor from time to time. He can definitely have the high ceiling, but it's that floor that can sometimes... Uh, 68. Jules, you require 36. Really affect. But to break right back... Be a big settler for him. No oh. score. Keith, you require four. Unfortunately, he's the type of player that really thinks through those moments Game and shot the really feels leg. like he needs to hit those moments, or else Jules there are times where he thinks he's out of the match by missing moments like that, even if it's early in, in, a, in, a in the match. Well, and that's definitely something that uh, that I've been critical um, of Jules on in the past is just uh, watching his reaction when, when the player in front 60. of him is playing well. It's usually deep in tournaments. It's usually no surprise to anyone mm -hmm. else that, yep. uh, that someone's playing well. And, uh, um, um, and Jules is throwing his hands up, uh, acting like he can't believe that the, the guy in front of him's hitting what he's hitting, which is uh, frustrating to watch. Um, because at, at this level, I can't imagine the stuff that's getting thrown at him <laughs> time after time. Every after week, time. pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is better. Look at this. One there he is. He breathed some fire into that 180. Maybe all he needed was a little bit of a spark. 140. And Keith Wayne not going anywhere. Nope. This is Jules' uh, leg here. Look at this. Gonna throw another one. He does to leave four. Back-to-back -back 180s from the Dutch Dragon. And then out of nowhere, he can also do that. 44. Jules, you require four. With no surprise or irony, Jules goes 180, 180 to leave uh, double two. And he hits it on dart three. That's a heck of a find <laughs> over the top of the other Fourth two darts. Leg, keep the throw yeah, first. not, not much on. pressure, but honestly, I think a nice clean leg to settle him in is what was needed. Yep. Can he kick on from here, continue that scoring? 60. He would have felt a lot better in that leg if that was a break of throw to get back on track. Only down one break, but in a format where it's first to five, We've consistently seen that if you're not getting that break early, it's tough to, to get to it before the match is over. 140. A good shot from Keith Way. Again, if you are just joining us here, we are live in Michigan City at the Cross Border Darts Challenge at Uptown Social. And uh, you're going to go back, 100. maybe a match. And we had a nine darter thrown by Alex Spellman in the last match. 180, 180, 141 checkout. Seven. And the Americans have a three to two lead in the Nations Cup. But they're one 45. victory away from securing at least the tie after night one.
with two matches left after this one that are Keith to require very much six. coin flips at moments. I would say Leonard should be favored over Jake McMillan, but Jake, the way Jake has been playing recently might say something a little bit differently than that. But Keith Way leaves 16 after 15 darts. McJewel's way back on 234. Looks like it's about to be 3 to 1. 28. Keith uh, requires Jules spraying 16. him there. No pressure on this double eight. Game and shot he hits the double the four. Leg. Fifth leg, Jules to throw first. Game on. And there. right back in the treble. 180. He's a follower in a good way, where he always follows that first dart with two more. <laughs> Yeah, I just need him to throw the red dart first. <laughs> there you go. The, Has that the, been the difference? <laughs> yeah. He is throwing the red dart first. No way to call that. <laughs> I didn't say it was going to help the darts. It was just <laughs> you just want to see it. My <laughs> yeah, if you're going to have red, white, and blue flights, it should go in the order of red, <laughs> yeah. white, and blue. I get it now. Good call. One That's a 180, 180 from Keith Way. Big, big shot. Brings him right back into this leg. As Jules left himself too much. 100. Looking good. His own leg here. After nine leaves, one, two, five. Keith would like another treble there. 140. Gets it. Jules, shot. you require 125. Such a su fun finish here. Double 20 for tops. Look at this, smooth. Needs it, knew it was going to. After it. that treble 20, dead center of the target, there was no way that was missing. Game on. Needed it, hit it. Keith was sitting at 1-2-1 one, one after 9 and did not even get a look. Yeah, now this, this is the leg. This is where Jules right now is thinking I need to take advantage of it right now. And the fact that he is, is going to really settle him. 140. Yeah. Advantage jewels after the first set of throws. Second one gets away from 140. him. One hundred and forty sticks in there. The bulbous darts that Keith throws—they're they, a little. They're, they definitely have a torpe torpedo uh, feel to them. Remind me of the old uh, Taylor Phase Fives. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit thinner than those. But he fires that dart into the dartboard. With no backswing either. It's no, impressive. I'm always impressed with people that don't have a, uh, a backswing. I, I don't know how they have the, the weight of the dart is the best way I can, I can explain 140. it. 140. Well, Jules will leave the first look at a finish here. The 137 left after nine. And this is an attack on Keith's throw. Oh, unlucky Jules there with the kick. But a single triple finish. Jules looking to set up. 57. Keith requires 80. 21. 1 2 1. This would hurt. You should get a dart at it. He'll be at the bullseye. Bull. And he hits the bullseye for a 4 to 2 lead. Seventh leg. Jules to throw first. Game on. Ah, oh, look at Keith marching around the stage now. See the Canadian fans there with their flags. 100. Getting pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure on the tournament favorite. 60. Yeah, this would be a huge upset as far as the odds are concerned. We've just we've seen moments of brilliance out of Jules, but just not the consistency. Sixty-eight. Sixty. Give a little sly smile there. Get into that one, but. Both of them having a little bit of slack round, giving Jules an, an opportunity here. 
but he's got to take advantage of it. 57. Yeah, Jules in a in an interesting spot here where it's uh it's hold break hold mm -hmm. uh for his path to victory where I think in the past we've seen 4-2 down with somebody against the darts 100. and it's uh break hold break which is a uh a much higher mountain to climb. You are not wrong. Jules very much in this match only needing that one break of throw. 100. And the success that he's had on the PDC a lot of times is Keith Way puts in a 138. Jules, you require 100. So this 127 almost has to go, and it won't now. 66 to do, maybe bowl. 103. Keith, you require 76. 14. Our caller on it. One dart for the match. Yeah, and that swallow was needed match. was one match dart. Keith Way upsets. Jules Van Dong in five to two. And the Canadians tie it back up three to three in the Nations Cup. Jules making an early and surprising exit in this uh, 2024 cross border dart challenge. Yes, yeah, standard. Uh, um, I mean, Keith Way winning in, in pretty much every category there. Uh, a little flurry from uh, from Jules there in the middle, but uh, um, your winner here, Keith Way, moving on. An impressive performance from Keith. And that means that we will see Alex Bellman taking on Keith Way in that matchup. So we got two matches left, my friend, and they are going to be two good ones. Jason Brandon, Jim Long will be coming up next, followed by Jake McMillan and Leonard Gates. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from the 2024 Cross Border Darts Challenge right after this. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
Luke Humphries, MVG, Michael Smith. The best against the best. The best against the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place.
Oh, how's it going? Are you watching us on our live stream or are you in the house here in Michigan City? Two matchups remain in tonight's cross border darts challenge. Who will win these final two matches? Well, let's find out who's competing in the seventh match of the night. We have a former CDC match play champion representing the great state of Tennessee. Please welcome Jason Brandon. Well, Michigan City, my watch just vibrated. It said I'm currently in a loud environment. Oh, I'm not? It's time to meet our next competitor, 2023 CDC cross-border runner-up from London, Ontario. They call him the gentleman. Let's see how he plays tonight. Give it up for Jim Long! Hello, everyone, and this is the sixth match of the 2024 cr CDC Cross-Border Darts Challenge live at the beautiful Uptown Social in Michigan City, Indiana. Indiana. This match features the cross-border finalist last year, the gentleman Jim Long, taking on Mr. Nice Guy, Jason Brandon. I'm Shaw Green, honored to be your play-by-play -play commentator, and I'm excited to bring back into the booth my partner in comms, Mr. Gordon Dixon. Gordon, this should be, on paper, a fantastic battle. Yeah, the penultimate match uh, of the evening, um, and and I don't know if this is done on purpose. I, I would assume it is. That seems to always be the highlight match, mm -hmm. um, and I think they've they've picked the right one here. I would be very surprised if someone runs away with this one. Um, both players, uh, extremely extremely great finishers. Yep. Um, so it'll all come down to the uh, scoring, which is kind of the opposite of some of the storylines that we've talked about. Uh, throughout the uh, evening before now, uh, but excited to see this one. Uh, Jason Brandon, always a uh, uh, a big finisher when he's uh, when he's on the stage. And played on the P the U.S. Darts Masters stage last year, as did the gentleman Jim Long. So both of them have the taste and would love to make it back. Uh, we will see if that happens. But I'm excited, man. The averages overall the from last year. Thank There's you, not a whole gentlemen. lot in them. 85.74, 84.3, or sorry, 85.48, 93.17 on. on the first line average to a 93.05. Their average finish is within one of each other. It's, it's insane how close this match on paper is. Yeah, a little slack start there from Jason. Maybe uh, one good turn deserves another. Swing. Sure did. As, <laughs> as we see there. We're going to use take two. Jason already looking a little Nine bit more frustrated than, uh, than normally uh, see from him. This is meant as no disrespect, but he kind of sometimes just kind of 
when he's focusing hard, it's kind of his hard focus face. More so than his, see? What is it, like upset face? 100. Deep I think he's just so, so used to us seeing him smile uh, constantly. I think the nice guy moniker fits him very well. 9-5. Jimmit having some uh, success on the uh, Modus. Absolutely. Tour. Um, and seniors. And seniors, yeah. So him branching out a little bit uh, past the season. 126. Tour. But again, I think uh, we can't speak enough about the CDC in general, given, given these players ample opportunity to play on stages, uh, longer formats. 29. Jason against better competition. Uh, the best competition they can find. And that's what's honestly making all of these players better. They're all raising their averages. They're all just Nine, shooting up to a higher level. And it's a testament to everyone's sacrifice to, to, to make the game better. It's always good to have a lot of partners in this, and the players, uh, without them as partners, uh, we don't have anything. Tops for Jason Brandon for leg number one, now double ten. Jason and it's in. Jason Brandon. Hold a throw. Like it's, throw it's a 17 dart hold a throw from, from JB. He takes a one nothing lead. Yeah, Jim with a uh, lot to be desired here thus far on the uh, Nine, scoring side. Seven. Jim Long was the victim of the Doug Bain 106 average in the Continental Cup in 2022. And that was with Jim averaging, I think, 97, 98 at the same time. Right. Why right. darts at the, uh, the upper echelon is all about consistency. Because, I mean, you're going to run into those buzz saws. Absolutely. And as we look at the averages, through the first six matches, uh, where we stand currently, Alex Bowman, the highest average, 97.21, including, of course, the nine dart leg that uh, I don't think we're going to stop talking about for a while, uh, making history here, cross-border darts oh, challenge. Yeah, when you average 167 for one of the uh, seven legs that you play. Ten stories that average. It'll, <laughs> it'll heighten that, uh, that average pretty good. 42. I'm going to take your word for it. Never gotten close to, uh, well, I guess I got about seven feet nine and a quarter inches away from a nine darter before. <laughs> Not a lot closer than that. 78. And then Sylvain Bordeaux, in a losing effort, has the second highest average for the evening, 89.12 against Alex Bellman. Danny Lobby, 87.33, 87.24 4 from Stowe Bunce. 64. Jim, you require 94. Going to be a very interesting night tomorrow. Sold out crowd here at Uptown Social. Twenty four. Jim hit a few neighbors there, but he has some time. This is about the moment where Jason Brown is going to put in a big score, just to make him think about it. Unlucky on dart two. One hundred and twenty three. Yeah, Jim, you great require shot there. seventy. Tap him on the shoulder, letting him know he's there. Again, a miss of the big number. Might only be 64, one the might get just one at the bowl. Oh, no. Oh. 30. Throwing a little tight right now. Jason this is not a Jim Long that, uh, that we are used to seeing. 68 left. It'll be the bullseye. 63. That would have been a big moment. Jim, you require four Jim returns with 40 left. With all of the hoopla here, it can all be erased from the mind with one double top. I can just unlucky that's not in the Swenson. It's not going to happen. So, Jason, Jason you required Swenson. I said I would be shocked if this one didn't uh, run close. But uh, Jason can, can take a two-leg two -leg lead here. 17. Yeah, uh, pretty slack on the doubles Jim there on those two from, from Jason. Yeah, nothing convincing at all about those two darts. Game Jim on the sticks line. it on dart two. 
was about to say, it, you could not be getting closer to the doubles without hitting them there. Still averaging only 63, but we know that's going to go up. Right now, the one to one score line. Averages only tell a story, they don't tell the whole story. As long as you win five legs. You've done your job for the night. And it's not like they need to worry about the form that they're in this evening. They have plenty of time tomorrow to um, maybe fix those little no, kinks or just wake up different. Well, and I've, I've talked about it multiple times. The first round of any tournament uh, is it's always nerve-wracking because you, you know you need to win that one to progress. So there's a there's a lot of pressure on it, and uh, I don't know what it is about that uh, that first match that once you get through it, you're like okay, now I'm into the tournament. And yeah, I can I can settle in and uh, and uh, and try to progress even further. And all of those players are returning tomorrow, knowing that half the field's gone already. One hundred and forty. That means half of the great competitors in the tournament are gone already. And all you can do is play the people that are in front of you. But tomorrow is going to be Fair quite an interesting yeah. experience. I don't think we're going to have a Jeff Smith situation where uh, it is just a clean run through for him. We don't lose a single leg. That's insane. That was an insane standard from Jeff Smith, which made his uh, work on the U.S. Darts Masters Four stage a, Jason, you require a little bit more. Uh, yeah, kind of could see that happening. Yeah, what a run. Still one of the greatest moments in U.S. darts history. Not just the darts hey, masters, but I mean three. Jimmy Require North American darts himself. history. It's, I mean. Speak of that event, uh, just a random TikTok. Um, I've talked about it before with uh, Jason Brandon. Yeah. Jason and the, the guy in the crowd. Uh, Look at that big fellow there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Look at that follow I, I don't know who this guy is, but everybody <laughs> loves him. And he, he, just the crowd erupting. Uh, it was awesome, awesome. Bullseye. That would have been for the hole to throw, and he threw a good dart at it. 24 left now for Jim Long to break the throw. And how about a 16 dart break a throw from Jim Long? Fourth leg, it's Jim to throw first. So after the struggles in the first two legs, now finds himself in the lead. And that's a 180 from Jim Long. Great way to start off after the break of throw. Yeah, Jim struggling for the first leg and a half. But uh, really turning it around here. 85. Again, if you're just joining us, we've had one major upset, Keith Way. Uh, Forty. Defeating the Dutch Dragon, Jules Van Dong, in round number one. Uh, we saw a nine-darter from Alex Spellman, which still is its the coolest moment of my commentating career, if I'm being honest with you. And uh, I, know he throw, I, know, I know he's thrown a bathroom nine-darter, but this one is a little bit better. Did it in front of the, the giant crowd. 58. Well, an opening night yeah. at the cross-border challenge. Yeah, so far, we have seen Stowe Bunce defeat John Part, 5-1. to one. David Cameron defeated Doug Bain, 5-1. to one. Jacob Taylor defeated L Larry Butler, 5-2. to two. Danny Lavi over Steve Warnock, 5-2. to two. Sylvain Bordeaux, Alex Spellman, another 5-2 to two scoreline. But that one, uh, Alex just took off at, that, at a certain point. And then, of course, Keith Way defeating Jules. Again, that score line five to two. One. Yeah, surprised we haven't had any Jimmy closer than, uh, than five two this evening, but such a good standard, good pace. This match is very easy to watch. Yeah, I've definitely not been upset with Four any of three. these. These matches, they've all had moments of brilliance in them. And 
right now you got to be thinking to yourself as a player, you just get to three first and you're going to win this. <laughs> 62. So Jim, Jim Long to get to three first. Tops. And he has really settled down after leg number one. Jim Long. He's really started putting a good performance. Gets Jason to throw first. Game Again, on. a huge shout out to our scoring officials tonight: Anthony DiGiulio, Trish Grezik, and 19-year-old Nicholas De Rossier. 140. This is the gentleman Jim Long from London, Ontario, Canada. Finalist last year. In the 2023 100. CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge, losing to fellow Canadian Jeff Smith. But in, in that losing effort, he did qualify for the U.S. Darts Masters and knew that going into that match. So he was very excited with the fact that he made the final, knowing that Jeff Smith already had his spot secured. I will not confirm that that is how that would play out this year because I'm not positive on that. I have not asked that question. If the winner happens to be one of the four players who already has their spot. Well, one of the three players in this field that already have their spot in the U.S. Darts Masters. Now two players left. Danny Lobby and Joe Bunce. 140. Jason, you require 164. Turned down on the 19s on the 164. 89. Smart last start. Jim, you require 138. This it hurt. What a time to do it. Jim Long come up with the 138. He will not. It's not going to happen. So, Jason Brandon. 58. Needs to check this 75. Jason, you require 75. Double 17 hit. Double 12. Oh, that's right there on the wire. Double 6 needed. And he hits it. On the fifth leg. Jason hold a throw at the end of the day, but it's a much needed hold of throw. But he still has to break the throw of the gentleman. And he's only going to get two opportunities to do that. This is one of them. 140. Jim starts off big. Jason with some much better chances early in this match Four, two, to one. break that uh, that throw. Just didn't get it done. Jim yeah. Long now in full swing. Both of them averaging over 80 now. 59. Which after the first leg or two was... He knew it was going to go up, but... It has raised significantly. Needs another. Nine it's an unlucky kiss into the ninth or into the fives. Three or two left for Jim. Options here. Does not have to shoot at it because of his opponent on three sixty five. The best he could leave is one eighty five. So we can kind of tee it up a little bit. Forty four. Ooh, and the scoring slack. Opportunity. Continues. Yeah, after that first start, this looks good. 140. Let that first start go a little bit soon. I love the sunglasses. The average Joe's dress up is amazing. Oh, look at this from Jim. 140. Follows the 140 with a 140 of his own. Somebody excited. Oh, yeah. Needs to switch. 58. So Jim, you require 118. So just like that, Jim Long back in the driver's seat. Set this up nicely Nine and hope that five. Jason doesn't take out this crazy 167 checkout. Jim this missing would be a big number again on the third dart. You hate to see it. He's going to find a big Fifth trouble. Nine. Doesn't Jim happen. So 23. 23. Not a number you see very often at all. He goes for 19 for double two. 
and he hits it. And it's a four to two lead for Jim Long. One leg away now. I'm giving the Canadians the lead in the Nations Cup at four to three. 125. But again, we talked about this in the uh, Jules match. The uh, the path for for Jason is a little bit easier than we've seen because it is uh, two holes rather than two breaks here to uh, to win the last three legs or the potential last three legs of this match. Seventy eight. And Brandon's going to have to start finding more than one treble in a turn with the way that Jim's throwing right now. Back-to-back -back 140s puts him in the driver's seat. Yeah, Jim smells a little blood here. He might be a gentleman, but every, every dart player in this moment's a shark. 96. Six starts from two two one. One hundred and fourteen. So eighty one when he comes back, and he will be back. Jason back on two oh two. One hundred and twenty three. Jim, you require eighty one. Jason going for the bull there, trying to leave 32. <laughs> He's not happy with how dead center of the three that first dart was. Well, I tell you, Jim has come back from some some pretty poor misses here. Double nine for the match. 63. One match dart. Jason, you're gone. 79. Will he get more? 57 for 22. Game show the seventh leg. Jason Brandon. Clean as a whistle. Like it's Jim to throw first. Game on. There's Anthony DiGiulio just selling in, watching the darts. Gets a match off from being on stage there. Fifty-eight. And a 58 start is an opportunity for Jason Brandon. It's got to stop going left and right. 45. If Jason does break the throw here, it, he will have the throw in the last league decider. Yeah, he'll go favorite for this match. There's Jim's better half. I very rarely see Jim without Rhonda. Which is wonderful. The support. I think for all of us there behind find us is either we're single or we have a great, great support system at home. Congratulate you again on your six month old. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Eighty five. I don't wish it on myself ever again, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> oh, measures were taken. There will, there will not be another. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, oh just low on the third. Yeah, Jason. Looking down on the 19th to start us off. Gets the treble. Oh, Going to put some pressure on. Doesn't even need to leave. Max pressure. 171. Leaves a hundred. What a great setup from him. This would be dirty if this goes right afterwards. Oh my gosh, it's on. Still on. Oh my gosh, it's on. And he hits it. A one forty six wow. to win the match after the one seven one. What a checkout! And look at how those averages actually finished up, bud. An eighty nine point seven five to an eighty eight point two five. And after that started, if you would have told me it would have been high eighties at the end. Color me shocked. Yeah, no, that was that was excellent. Uh, I mean, what what a match to describe timing. Yep, um, that's exactly what it was. I mean, Jim Long was missing big All numbers, right, ladies and gentlemen, horrifically. Give a warm hand of applause and for Jason Brandon. When it came down to it, needed to finish. One forty-six. Check out at the end. It's pretty pretty incredible, man.
Uh, well, unfortunately, this night has to end, but not quite yet. We have one more great matchup to go. The Canadians lead the Nation Cup 4-3. to three. So all eyes will be on Leonard Gates for the USA to uh, tie that up at four. Leonard Gates taking on Jake McMillan, Captain Canada versus Soldier. It's going to be a good battle. Can't yeah. wait to see uh, Soldier in uh, in action here. Um, Jake, I, I mean, you can't call him an unknown at this point. Nope. I mean, for, for everything that he's qualified for, uh, this is, this is going to be a good one. Excited to see it. Yeah, guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back with the last – match of the first round of the Cross-Border Darts Challenge right after this. Is the best. There is no sign of this teenage dream coming to an end. It's eight of the best, and there is no hiding place. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the house, make some noise. And if you're at home, we want to thank you for joining us on our live stream. It's time for the final match of the night. Are you ready? Our final two competitors are about to take the stage. First up, we've got a former U.S. Masters qualifier representing Smith Falls, Ontario. His name is Jake McMillan, but they call him Captain Canada! Last person to take the stage tonight to compete with a chance to win tomorrow night. Our final competitor is coming to the stage right now. A former CDC Continental Cup champion representing Houston, Texas. Please welcome Leonard Soldier Gates. Welcome back to Michigan City, Indiana. Indiana. I'm from here. <laughs> For the final match of the 2024 CDC Cross Border Darts Challenge, this match features Captain Canada, Jake McMillan, taking on the three time senior major winner, Soldier Leonard Gates. I'm Sean Green, your play play commentator, and I'm joined once again by the amazing, incredibly talented, good stuff himself, Mr. Gordon Dixon. Gordon, this has been an absolutely incredible opening night, and I think. This match could be the most incredible one of the evening. Yeah, this one has a lot of potential. I mean, obviously, again, I think we have a clear favorite mm -hmm. um, in uh, in Leonard Gates. But uh, um, this man, uh, McMillan, has done some big things on this tour um, at some big big times uh, to qualify for, uh, for some of the largest events. So I don't think he can be counted out. The other thing is, I don't know. So I know he's he's a Continental Cup champion. I don't know how much uh, success Leonard has had in this event. Um, he lost, I believe, in the first round last year uh, to Steve Warnock, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yeah. so that's where I was. I was headed yep. with this. So um, Leonard uh, has that probably tucked away far, far in the back of his mind, but uh, in his mind nonetheless. So. Looking to uh, to definitely change that. Well, Jake was one of the newcomers to the U.S. Darts Masters last year, uh, qualifying at the Brownsburg Qualifiers in Indiana as the third qualifier, winning the uh, leg race by one leg to qualify. And then he got on stage and looked like he belonged. And I know that he is one of those players that is also uh, now having a taste of it, want wanting to get back there. Well, and a good pace, um, and, and the the thing about that qualifier, he initially thought that he had lost that mm -hmm. uh, that race. One was very cordial yeah. in congratulating um, who he thought had uh, had won that. Um, one which which was a great showing as well. 
And he gives it, too. I like it. Yeah, no. Well, I, he's, uh, he's up there with a showman, uh, the, the dancer himself, Leonard Gates. Yay, T3. Jake a little booty shake to, to start oh, the yeah. match off. Hey, he gets on a stage, and the dancing just takes over. 58. Leonard, you require 137. All right, 137 for Gates. Otherwise, Jake will come back with a chance to break the throw right out the gate. No pun intended. <laughs> I thought you were working that in there. I was not trying to. 20 will leave tops. The one thing that you always have to watch with Gates is, I believe, uh, Dan Dawson gave him moniker uh, Too Many Lenny. Yep, Lenny Too Many. Yep. Uh, yeah, we uh, just saw another uh, instance of it on the uh, Modus. It series. was an impressive number to bust, though. No, it was. It was. First start was perfect for Jake. Yeah, and leg number one, leg. a break of throw for Jake, Jake McMillan. McMillan. 15 dark break of throw. Jake to throw first. And Jake winds it up. Game I like on. it. Yeah. Giving it the uh, full can of beans, as they say. 46. With a full plate of poutine for, can <laughs> for Canada? I don't know how that would work. Look at this. Soldier. from Soldier. Leonard Gates. With the 180. We've had two in this, le or this match so far. I know before the last match, we already had 11 180s. Uh, for the tournament last year, there were only 15. Oh, wow. Which is honestly a very shocking, shockingly low number 16. for 15 well, matches. Jeff Smith not playing that, well, that many legs. That's true. He did away, cut out a lot of legs. <laughs> taking away opportunities. 48. All right, Soldier, right now in the driver's seat against the throw to break right back. 100. And this is what you'll see the most from Leonard Gates. His scoring power is up there with the best in the world at times. 100. The Leonard consistency 161. can sometimes leak in. Twenty-eight. Forty-two. Leonard, you require one hundred and thirty-three. Fifty-five. Jake, you require one hundred and seventy. One seventy now for Jake. The big fish. Not going to go. 98. Leonard, you require 78. 78 to break the throw. And put him right back in the driver's seat. Leonard needs this. He does not want to see another celebration from Jake. James and that's a big there. dart. Dead center Leonard of the Gates. double tops for Leonard Gates. Yeah, you know. Third leg is Leonard to throw first. Leonard feels good about that one. Game on. The wisdom there just kind of, and the experience, I think, of him just, all right, I, I'm going to throw my game too. Not going to freak out after the first leg. 140. <laughs> 97. Yeah. All Nine right, 96 six. from... Leonard, great cover shots. Let's turn off the 140. Jake wants that break back. 60. He gave it up a little too easy there in that, uh, that second leg. And Soldier, that's another 180 from Leonard Gates. <laughs> 41. Leonard, you require 85. Now, in terms of the cross-border challenge in its spirit, mm -hmm. this would be four apiece. It if, would be uh, four apiece. If we get Leonard through. 60. Now, 
Let's talk the matchups, though. We got Alex Spellman, Keith Way, Jacob Taylor will take on the winner of this one, which will be another American Canadian. Uh, up top, David Cameron takes on Danny Lobby. So another Canadian American matchup, and then Jim Long, Stowe Bunts. Oh my gosh. So Game this could be a leg. really interesting, uh, almost perfect first, setup yeah. for this type of, of an event. Leonard Gates does win the second leg One pretty cleanly. But Jake's starting off with a big 140. Yeah, Jake needs to keep this close. And after night number one, we're going to at least have a tie yeah, record on the 180s for the event. It's already been a historical yeah, night with Alex Bowman hitting the nine darter. One hundred. Jake with like a couple of trebles here. Not going to get One that, but hundred. still in the driver's seat of the leg. Gates sitting at 342. Nothing he can do can leave a finish here. One hundred and forty. But he taps Jake on the shoulder there, doesn't he? Need the trouble. 60. Doesn't find it, so. Timing. Yep. This is this is where uh we see people separate themselves. Eighty four. Would Jake you say that there's a big emphasis on the setup play, play being the difference between that top level player versus Maybe, eight, maybe eight. a very good player. You require well, yeah, I think I think finishing from um, from two fifty and six darts is probably the biggest stat um, that would that would show why 50, a Luke Littler, uh, MVG, uh, go on down the list of uh, the top players. And there's a little bit of some find calls it. out of there from the crowd. Now, the crowd, it was, it was a come on Jake first as he was throwing the dart, but did that affect a little bit? Leonard missed a big number. He's only getting one dart at this. <laughs> you see the look on his face. He just barely gets the big number on the second try. Oh, oh. he threw a good dart, too. Nah, the hip. He wanted, he wanted the hip to go in. And Jake McMillan. A good marker, Game and he finds it on dart line. two. Check McMillan. Fifth two to two like score line. To throw first. Raise the eyebrows. So we will get to the uh, the omen three. Although that that curse was broken Nine, in the last match. But this is beautiful. One hundred and eight. And Jake McMillan starts off with a one eighty. Against the throw, exactly what you want to do. And this could be timed perfectly for him, too. Against the throw to make it 4-2 to two if he does break here. Did break in leg number one, but Gates broke right back. 140. 180-140. Doesn't get much better than that. Nah, Jake's stringing them together now. Soldier's starting to... Slow down a little bit. I was going to say 180 would leave a finish here. 100. <laughs> 96. And Jake's 180 in this leg does break the record at 16 now for 180s. In this event, in its second year. 81. Jake, you require 85. 25 bowl? No, you don't have to do that. 24. 61. Yeah, Leonard not on a finish, so Jake had his choice there. Don't hit another big treble. <laughs> 134. Beautiful Jake setup. Jake, require 24. Game shot on the fifth leg. But he breaks with a 13 dart break a throw. Six leg, it's Jake to throw first. Jake gives it Game to on. him again.
crowd helping. One hundred and four. Second and third dart go in. Yeah, it sure did. It's a good placeholder for Leonard's darts. Hey, C five. You would have, I think, expected better than that after the first dart, just below the wire. One hundred and twenty-one. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems like when Jake throws a little bit faster with a faster rhythm, he some of those starts right where he wants to. Ninety-seven. Forty-five. Only forty-five there. Jake had a great debut at. Modus earlier 96. this year. I know you mentioned that. Leonard has always had a good running at Modus. 45. Oh, back to back turns of 45 bring Leonard Gates right back into this leg. And now he's definitely right back in the leg. 121. Last Jake start. 150. Wow, look at this. Oh. 114. A wire width away from a Let huge check checkout. Does this have to go? He's going to get a look at it. 610 wire. There it is. 32. 70. Just on the outside. What a Jake shot coming 36. in for Jake McMillan to go one away. Double nine. Yeah. And adjust beautifully for dart three. And what a dart that is. Four to two score line over Leonard Gates. Now another situation that we've seen far too often tonight where the player that only needs to win one break of throw has fallen short in this moment. In fact, every single time. They have lost this leg. Crowd cheering on Leonard. 60. Leonard only 60. Jake back into that trouble. 95. One hundred. One hundred and forty. Nice one forty. Gates should get the first look at a finish from this point. One hundred and forty. Oh, very much will. Hip thrust the treble nineteen in there. One hundred. I like that Leonard move. For him, it, it's just a feeling it type of motion that he does. It's it's done after he throws the dart, pretty much, which is where you don't see the uh, effect happen. Tops. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Beautiful like this. checkout from Gates. Leonard Gates. I don't know that I've seen him shoot 104 like that. Good, good for him. <laughs> Eighth leg is Jake to throw first. It's game on. It's really the new way to take out that 104. Because 100. missing into the five or one with 104 left is you're dead for that turn. Starting on the 16s, and I believe the person who made this argument, 100. maybe not first, but the most famous one is Danny Bagish, World Darts Championship when he had 104 left and went at the 16s. And then talked about it afterwards and why he did that. 120. Yeah, there was something the uh, um – uh, Robbie Phillips had always argued for. The robot? 59. I don't miss left or right. 100. So you wouldn't know. Yeah, I don't. I That's fair. Understand it. <laughs> That's fair. I've seen you play darts from time to time. <laughs> You're not bad. Leonard. Oh, he needs this. Oh, he needs this. Doesn't leave a finish, but it puts a lot of pressure on this 181. And if there's not a trouble hit, 
Nice. Smart last start from Jake McMillan. Yeah, what a what a setup there. All Leonard can do is set this up and hope that Jake does not hit the 91. But it looks like there's going to be a lot of pressure on this, at maximum pressure on this. Here we go. 42 left. 100. Leaves 32. Jake First Rupert start huge here. Oh, yeah. Hits it. Oh, wow. Look at Look him. Look at that. Look at him. Double 10. And he hits it. What a gutsy move after doing the face and the come on. To actually, it pays off for him. And what another, it's another big upset. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. applause for Leonard Gates. Leonard Gates is out with a 96.29 average to Captain Canada, Jake McMillan. Timing. The timing, well, ladies timing. and gentlemen, give yourselves the a big round of applause. You've been a great crowd. And Keep it going for Captain Canada as we close out the night, everybody. I want to give a big special shout out to, to the crew and the staff and the folks here at the Uptown Social. Also want to give it up for our officials, Nick, Angelo, Trish, and DJ Dave for playing the right tracks to keep this crowd hyped up. Give it up for our music man up top, everybody. And uh, I'm Jay Flats. That's it for us here on the floor. And I'm going to send it back up to the booth to Sean Green and Gordon Dixon. I'm Jay Flats. Good night from the floor. Well, night one, Gordon, in the books. And uh, five to three lead in the Nations Cup for Canada. We had a nine dart finish tonight, which, again, every time I say it, oh, how wonderful that is. It's so awesome to see. There has been some uh, some great darts tonight, and tomorrow night we have four fantastic battles that are going to turn into uh, one champion. Who's going to win the Nations Cup? Who's going to qualify for the U.S. Darts Masters? Time will tell, and tomorrow will be the decider. We want to thank all of the players and fans tonight uh, for this fantastic night of darts. Uptown Social, Michigan City, Indiana has been wonderful. We will be back in action tomorrow starting at 7 p.m. local time, 8 p.m., no, 6 p.m. local time, 7 p.m. Eastern for the conclusion of the Cross-Border Darts Challenge. From Peter Cetera, David Irit, Jeff Good, Anthony Eugenia, and the rest of the CDC staff, thank you so much for tuning in and have an absolutely wonderful rest of your evening.